Good evening. Uh, call the meeting to order. We have a few people. We're expecting everybody tonight, aren't we? As far as I know. But we have a few people uh, missing, including our uh, police and fire chiefs who are unavailable tonight due to the downed trees and other situations in town. So we'll use the time between now and the continued public hearing at uh, 7.30 to cover uh, some other miscellaneous business. So why don't we go to the first one under um, the Legacy Farm South Village's bond release. Uh, so as part of that site plan, they had provided a bond of $25,000 that um, the South Villages have been fully occupied. Beta has done their um, compliance review and given them the sign off. Um, no other outstanding issues for the site plan for the villages. So I would recommend that the board release the bond at this time. Any discussion? Uh, discussion, Mr. Chairman? Is there any? It sounds like this has already been addressed, but um, <coughs> like from a safety perspective or anybody who does an inspection of the site, I remember uh, previously there were, there were issues around uh, cleanup and dust and other things like that. It's yep, so that, that was part of Beta's review. The only um, thing that might still be out there is some erosion control measures that didn't get fully cleaned up. That's under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. Um, they won't sign their completed order of conditions, certificate of compliance, until that gets done. So that's under their jurisdiction. Got it. So but all the like dust and everything should be, well, yeah, it should all be done. Um, everything should be hydroceded or vegetated to the extent possible at this point. Um, they do have some um, guarantees with the homeowners about um, vegetation taking within a year. So um, we're comfortable, Beta was comfortable with that as far as if something isn't taken now, it'll be, they've got a guarantee with the homeowners that it will be done. So there wasn't much to, okay. to chop them with. So. And does CONCOM have to also sign off in order to release the bond or is the bond strictly the bond is strictly under the site plan oh, planning board okay. correct all right that's good that's helpful thank you sure. yeah. uh, chair. are there any um like detention basins that uh obviously there were detention basins and in, uh, installed as part of the the development uh, uh, do we know if all of those are working functioning properly they were when beta did the inspection a month or two ago mm -hmm. um i can't speak to right now but you know at the time of when beta did their inspection and we signed their final occupancy they were at this point everything's under the jurisdiction of the homeowners association and the operation and maintenance plan mm -hmm. um you know once they receive their final occupancy it's kind of out of our hands i just want to let you know that i received a text from frank saying that he's on his way so through you, Mr. Chair, um, do we know if they, when they came before us to do that circle with the, the fancy bricks or whatever mm -hmm. they're going to do, do we know if they've completed that? It, they, it's done. Okay. Well, I saw, I saw at least the entrance. Okay. It is done. All and that it's work. red, by the way. In case red. You know. Ooh, it nice. is completed. But that work is under the um, road, the subdivision road, okay. which is a different project. Just as a side note, and probably off the record, I probably could have built some nice curbs in there with that $25,000. <laughs> different project, different developer. No. Yep, that was, this is for Pulte. That was uh, McDowell. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought this was, oh, right. Okay, any other? I got a motion to release the bond. I make a motion to release the bond as stated. Second. We have a second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carries. Second item, uh, Muriel, our police chiefs are not able to join us because of the... I'm guessing I know what they were up to. <laughs> I got myself all kind of not the same. to my son saxophone lesson. No, the same getting here. <laughs> you notice this is a Cumberland? Yeah. Tea instead of a Dunkin' Donuts. I'm just saying. I got I, I myself got a little... <laughs> uh, Christian oh, Way... Station. Christian Sorry. Way bond release. Um, yes, this is a subdivision that was a... I think it was a three-lot subdivision... Um, several years ago, uh, the developer had come to us last year requesting 
the release of the remaining bond for the road work, which is about twelve hundred dollars. Um, at the time, we had our inspector um, Luckner Bias go out there and review the road, and there were some outstanding issues that needed to be repaired. He has since repaired those. We had Luckner go out there two weeks ago. He was completely satisfied. I believe I put that report in your packet. Um, so at this time, I would recommend to release the remaining twelve hundred dollars. And this is a private road. It right? is a private road. We'll remain a private road. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah, you got one here. Oh, just for the viewers at home, this is off, off of Pond Street, I believe, right? Yeah. Yes. I was just looking that up. <laughs> <laughs> I just passed that, actually. Okay. <laughs> so is this the, where the town opted not to buy the land? Is that this that development? No. Oh, no. This is, is, it, is this affiliated with um, uh, Winter Street? Building. No, this is off Pond. This was a private <coughs> development, basically. Uh, family subdivision. Family family subdivision. Oh, in the, the in the corner? Mm. Well, not yeah. in the corner. It's next to where we decided not to buy oh, the land, the but it's before that. So there's school and there's Westcott. That's okay. Kind of and I believe Kobe just. On Christian Way here, right? Kobe yeah. just told me that the state purchased some of the land. Well, going or going is going, going to purchase some of the land. There's Westcott. It's a special circumstances to allow that. Okay, can I get a motion? To a motion. Second. A second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carry. Um, can you just skip that one and go to the next one for Because I think the next one will be quick. Can we skip the master plan for a minute? Oh, that's what I was going to do. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you on the same thing. <laughs> Uh, discuss future meeting location, going paperless. Why don't we touch on going paperless first? Sure. Um, so as, as you know, since we've had a flood at Town Hall and we've not had access to all of our equipment and materials, um, we've tried to go as paperless as possible. Um, the town itself is trying to go more paperless. The town manager has sort of strongly encouraged boards to completely go paperless. So I was speaking with um, the chairman in our meeting last week and um, I know some of you have concerns about that. I feel like we need to respect some of what the town is trying to do in this regard. So I think a good compromise would be to go paperless and then I would be printing the plan sets or whatever plans we get for you on 11 by 17, if that works for the board. And have that available at the meeting. So yeah. basically. I, mean, I would still do agendas in my memo for the public, so you could always grab one right. of those too. But as far as the other, like stormwater and documentation, other documentations, I think we need to respect that and go paperless. Before we had the flood at Town Hall, I was tracking the costs of mailing those packages yeah. to you. And I don't even want to tell you how much some of that. I mean, I lost the total in the flood, but <laughs> it was quite significant. Some you were weeks. tracking it on paper? That's correct. Yeah. I was <laughs> tracking it on paper. <laughs> I mean, at some weeks, I mean, seven or eight dollars was minimal. I mean, some weeks it could well, be yeah, but higher. Four, I mean, yeah. yeah, per package. Yeah. And there's nine of you <laughs> twice a month. To you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Just so I understand, so on paperless, so I won't get anything. But if you're, you'll get the email that you get now. Okay. PDF. But I mean, you were talking about printing maps. Yeah, so that would work? those would be here for okay. you. Any of the large plans, etc., that have okay. been sent mm -hmm. here for us during so, the meeting. So there'll be no snail mail. Correct. Okay. So if I may add to that, Jen um, Blucher, it w could you make sure that we have them? on our table before you put them out on that table yes. so that this way yes. if one of us shows up late for whatever reason yes. that we have a copy sitting with us yes as long as you promise me you don't grab them out there and bring them you in know here. they're going to be on your table yeah if they're, if they're going to be on the table yes. we all I, if we make this change i will make sure everything that you need in paper will be on the table in front of you terrific i'm totally okay going 100 okay. percent paperless so if we support maps that's fine but i don't need any paper 
I think okay. we need a vote. I'm just going to tell you I love paper, but Me I'm too. just going to just, you know, I'm going yeah. to I'm going to be big about it. That's yeah. all. I'm with you. Marilyn, I'm with you. I said I jokingly said earlier I said paper will set you free. Yeah. <laughs> but given I, I understand from a cost and, and labor, I'm totally cool with that. And the maps would be helpful. And, the and it makes Jen, it easier for you. She said you can print it on your own printer if you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've uh, seen yeah. that. We've I seen uh, 160 pages or something. 500. A yeah. recent one. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. That was great. But, right, we but think about been, if I had to mail that. We haven't been getting those in the mail. No, but no. before we left town hall, we you were, all were. So we're, we're, we're talking about it going to a process that we've been using since I've been on the board. Right. Yes. And make it, formalizing it from yeah. when we're right. back home. Correct. Right. Are, are we required to provide hard copies at every meeting? No. That's just no. something we do. Yeah. I mean, okay. I think probably at least copies of the agenda for people yeah yeah i'm just i'm just thinking of a cost yeah yeah Yeah. i'm just curious i think i've been scaling back on that as well because i do now i do the way i do the packet now i am able to post the whole packet as the agenda on the web meeting calendar so people have access to that when you do Mm -hmm. so i've been scaling back on some of that now as well well as ken go ahead i'm sorry sorry so for all of us newbies Mm -hmm. it's no change. No change, no change. really for you. Okay. Yeah. Right. But to that point, as Ken put it, Ken Weissmental put it, you know, a lot of us, when we get a paper p- product in front of us, we're able to mark it up, do everything we want to it, and the technology that we have in front of us for electronics doesn't allow us to do that. But uh, so, if you have the right, you can mark it up. On well, your we could request, and again, I don't know what the cost would be on that, but there are uh, annotation uh, uh, apps that they can put on there, I, you know, if if you so yep. felt. And, and I think that that's where it's helpful because when yeah. we take when we walk away from this and we we have things that we have to um, either look into, follow up on, our notes are on the paper usually. But right now, I mean, you girls are doing fantastic with your computers and you got it in front of you and you're doing the stuff. Um, Just making a point, we're not girls. Uh, women. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. Uh, so, so <laughs> we as we as a team, you know, I, I know we 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 push back against change a lot, and I might be one of them on this for this instance is that um, I like to have the paper in front of me. So, other than that, um, I just say and reiterate what Ken Weissmental said, which was a good point. Is that when we are when we're able to do what we want to with the information that we have to carry over to the next meeting or whatever we're doing, then that's something else. I, I question one part of that, and that is is that why do we always have to do the redundancy of rep- repetitive sendouts when we can note on the top of maybe something that we're going to use again the following week that we could we, that would be well this. This, this piece you, you should hold on to for the next meeting rather than reprinting it over and over and over and over again and sending them up. So that's just something out, some other way to look at it is that you know instead of the 600 or the 500 pages, we know that we've already printed out aspects of that and maybe you have a few extra copies here when you come and then that, that way we have those if we didn't keep the ones previous, or if they, we didn't, we forgot them, or we came from work directly to here, or whatever. How way, way that works, then we have it, but we don't need to keep repeating the the, the printing of all the, that stuff. Well, I think having it electronically is part of the purpose. Uh, yeah, it's part. It. And you don't necessarily know the meeting before where you're going to need at the meeting right. after. Right. But I think we've probably beaten mm-hmm. the horse sure. on this one. Uh, location. So, first of all, is there an estimate when Town Hall will be? 2020? 2008. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, um, really, nobody's really giving a straight answer to that question. I think um, it just depends on the work. I mean, I know they started some of the work, but then I think they got stalled again. So, I'm not, I mean, people are estimating next March, April, May. No. Oh. Is this not a viable option? Going well, forward? one no, of the so questions I, is we had the discussion uh, <laughs> is that should we look at continuing holding our meetings here even after? I think this is, Three, a great space. this is perfect. Mm-hmm. Is, there, is there a cost for this? I spoke with HKM and they would be more than happy to have us continue on. 
And part of the issue with looking at some of the other buildings is I said, what about the library? It's not HCAM compatible. They didn't <laughs> build it in. So, um, you know, I just wanted to get feedback. Yeah, I think it's very nice for the public that when it, we're here and it's recorded on HCAM, it's available on the YouTube like the next, the very next day. So I think it's very nice for the public. Yeah. And there's there's more room to spread out. There's a um, lot of room. Yeah. There's, there's more room for the public too. Yeah. Right. right. Mm -hmm. so I don't think there's any reason not to have it here right, right. Yeah, yeah, there's absolutely agree. no downside to having okay. it here. More parking and, here too. And yeah. hopefully there's an upside to HCAM. Um, and the only other question that we had, now that we have the majority of the board here, at the last meeting there was some um, discussion based on not, especially if we're not going back to town hall, um, when we have meetings with CONCOM and planning board on the same night, does mm. the board want to consider changing its meeting night? Well, let me tell you what we discussed. I am a believer on the old, your sense of crisis does not make me hurry. So my reaction is, as, is to tell the applicant to take care of what they need to do in front of CONCOM <laughs> and then come to us. It might not be the final decision. We might have to review something afterwards, but even if it's a day or two off, et cetera, and people can do it. I like the idea that the issues addressed by CONCOM, we come in, we know what CONCOM has said as far as they can go if they're waiting for us to address something. But having it one night and then the other night, it it's kind of goes back to having enough time to evaluate what they say to get an understanding of it, et cetera. Um, there's a bigger point too for I think a lot of us as we've articulated it's making sure that we don't disenfranchise right. any of the public who needs to see it so mm -hmm. um, yes as far as our process obviously it's it's much better if we have a little bit more information certainly um, but we, we we collectively have an obligation to the public Correct. to make sure we're scheduling things so that they can get to everything if they want to so no issue with telling the applicants yeah, well, because and for those the new people who don't know and for those who don't remember I do a yearly schedule for the board so people are aware of what nights you meet unless you change that uh, after the fact like so I will be starting it this month um, for next year okay. so okay. they will know by the end of this year what your whole schedule for 2018 will be so they will have an idea um, it's not like it's sprung on them the month before. Yeah, the end. no, there's no information that's been <laughs> hidden from that. Right. Um, so I think that just if we're making this process um, formalized, it will be in a different location. I think we just need to get in the habit of asking the applicant when they are scheduled to go before another board, yeah. town yeah. in particular, so that we make sure we do our best. So the, we're right. all saying that the plan is to keep the meeting on a Monday night, which. Well, I think Maybe. keep it on a Monday night, and basically anything that has to come to us that has to be addressed by CONCOM is addressed by CONCOM before it comes yeah, to us. Yeah. At I, the I'd like to meeting. support keeping it on Monday night. We've had it on Monday yeah. night forever. I've scheduled my schedule, no personal one. schedule around. Yeah. Yeah. Work schedule and travel next yeah. Monday. And right. Jennifer, you can be the gatekeeper when the applicant files. Mm -hmm. So the, the only wrench that might happen with that plan, which I completely will support for you, is that <clears throat> sometimes the Conservation Commission might have an issue with giving a final decision right. until you've looked at Because if you're going to change things or move building locations or change parking layouts or whatever, that may affect mm -hmm. the wetlands and the buffer zones and whatnot. So they may not want to go full throttle on their approval until you've at least seen it mm -hmm. and I have given some sort of stamp that yes this layout looks okay proceed so I just want you to keep that in mind too okay. yeah I was actually going to mention that you know wetlands protection act actually requires that they have completed all the review with other boards so before they can issue a final uh, yep yeah, I order so I, I agree on the final yeah, yeah. But I think if we have, because at times we're not able to address runoff issues, et cetera, because CONCOM hasn't addressed it, if they can address those items ahead of time so we can then take our action and then it goes back to CONCOM for the final. Absolutely. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, 
Um, next item is approve the minutes from September 25th. It's in your packet. I'll move the minutes. I'll oh, second. We have a second? Yep. yep. Second. Any discussion? So approval of the minutes. Let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. <coughs> So carry. So I am guessing we have four minutes left. We hold <laughs> the discussion <laughs> on the uh, master plan uh, until the end of the meeting mm -hmm. and discuss it at that time. Um, anybody have any comments related to uh, any correspondence, miscellaneous correspondence you want to address, Jennifer, or other? Board member comments, liaison reports, etc. You don't think I have anything else. I have a liaison report, but I can talk about it later. No, we've got five minutes. Okay. Four, four minutes. <coughs> four minutes. Make it fast. Okay. First of all, thank you for uh, uh, patience. Right, while he's, can I buy you 30 seconds of time? Through you, Mr. Chair. So I'm just looking at the next meeting and I see the um, Whisper Ridge is an open space landscape preservation development. Mm -hmm. Is that one of our zonings? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what uh, Chamberlain and Whaling came in as originally. Okay. Landscape preservation. I'll read up on special that. Special permit. Thank you. Okay, so the Center School of Use Committee met and um, I informed them that uh, Amy's been elected as a deputy member from the planning board, uh, deputy liaison. And uh, we continued discussions, collecting data from different uh, town departments, and talked about planning for the forum, which now be, we think will be held in January, uh, the public forum to discuss the center use reuse uh, ideas. Um, the next meeting is November 9th, which I uh, cannot attend, so I'm hoping that Amy oh, can, November can attend. And um, we've been meeting in the center school, uh, but they're looking to come back to meeting next door at the Parks and Rec's office. Um, there's been some discussion about different groups that are represented or not represented, and um, it, it was just decided by consensus that the, the five voting members would uh, continue just to, to maintain the, the group as it is with the liaisons from planning board and board of selectmen. Um, but the uh, Parks and Rec were looking to have more participation and more of a say uh, in, in uh, the process. But um, right now it's just we're at the 30,000 feet level looking down. So uh, it's a lot of um, gathering data stage. And we're looking forward to our data. And I know that Jen has uh, distributed Ken's uh, in our planning board letter from two years ago. So if you guys have comments about that, um, that would be great. And we can maybe have a consensus or something to forward back to the Center, Use, Center School of Use Community uh, about that. I have all the comments we had from the last meeting that I'm compiling as well. Excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is that okay with you? Huh? Yeah, so Frank, I can make that meeting on the 9th. W where is it? Uh, it will probably be in par the Parks and Rec's office. Oh, sorry, Parks and Rec at 7. Okay. Okay, we have a minute and a half left. <laughs> Um, I, I'll just make a comment. I, I had said that I would send um, suggestions for discussion for future meetings, and, and I didn't do that till today, but I did do that. Um, but the other thing that's part of it um, is just um, I did do the site plan class, so I attached the handout so that everybody can have the handout electronically. Um, it was actually really informative, really um, low key and easy, and one of the things I remember from taking classes before is that they very often have very talented people um, doing the classes. So it was um, easy to ask some specific questions that informed my process and what I needed to learn uh, a little bit about here. So um, I'm passing those out now. Oh. Yes, I spoke to her and said, let's 
Oh. Well, wow, because I just sent that. I know. So, and you missed my comment about if you're going to give me stuff for the meeting, don't do it at 4.30 nope, the day of the nope. meeting. <laughs> so I already knew that, just so you know. I knew that, and I didn't expect it to be here. Thank you. I apologize for sending it so late. What I would suggest, and I have 20 seconds to suggest it, is look at some of the topics uh, that Muriel suggested, and maybe what some of them, um, if you think, should go in front of Zach this year, because you know there might be some we want to turn over to Zach to take a look at. Okay, we are so I'm gonna just give these at 7.30. Back to you, just because they're extras and I have them. Sure. Home, and then you can just have them. Sure. Somebody else needs them. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the continued public hearing, 147 Lumber Street. Mr. Dia. How are you? You have Main Street? Uh oh. Okay. You would think. Thank you for thinking. <laughs> no, I was turning the uh, Lumber Street oh, over yeah, yeah. To, to him. You were covering last week. I was just uh, turning everything over to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's open the hearing. Um, we've got the checklist, but any, do we have the applicant here? Applicants, yes. yes. Are, are coming. set up and whoever wants to <coughs> come up front. I need to be on this side so the camera can catch it. Thank you. Maybe start with that. Well, we do this before we start. Well, as they're getting set up, I want to give an update through the last, since you were at the last meeting, and I apologize for missing it, and then we'll have the applicant yeah, I think at the last meeting, if I'm not mistaken, we kind of reviewed uh, the site plan walk, um, and we went over some of some of the follow-up questions that came out from that. And I know that there was going to be an additional meeting with CONCOM, um, which I think is happening to, to, be, continued. to be continued. So um, why don't you uh, maybe just give an update um, to the board of things that have occurred in the last couple weeks since we last got together sure I'd be happy to thank you thank you mr. chairman um, what we've done uh, in the last couple of weeks is uh, we've we've done several things uh, we've looked at our um, site plan we've heard some of the comments and concerns of, of neighbors and what we're working on right now is looking at whether or not we can reduce some of the panels that are located on the eastern edge of the eastern array, closest to the abutters on Alexander Road. Okay. Why don't you turn the easel yeah. a little more? Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't see it at all. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. This way, and yeah. just so everybody's on the same page, point out where you're talking about. That, that's okay. Exactly. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. So, so we're looking at that now, trying to see if there's a way for us to reduce some of the panels without impacting the uh, financial viability of the project. And we will have an answer for you next week and hopefully submit revised plans um, that show we're, we're doing our best to uh, reduce that eastern edge and uh, pushing panels further away from that wetland and from the abutters. In addition to that, um, we will be providing details of a, an opening, a path, if you will, between the two arrays that will allow wildlife to move back and forth, um, uh, especially from, uh, from the north or the south, um, so that there would be an access way basically through the array. Uh, one of the concerns that was raised um, by both the CONCOM, quite frankly, and, and some others, uh, some neighbors and others, was the wildlife and the impact that the arrays may have on uh, preventing the f you know, them from moving from one area of the site to the other. So we hope to have a detail uh, of that pathway 
for you with the revised plans that we intend uh, to submit. We have, um, we have also uh, heard some concerns from neighbors primarily about uh, the stormwater basins and you know what would happen in the event that there was a catastrophic failure of the basins. Um, so we will agree to provide the town with a bond uh, for the stormwater um, uh, design for the stormwater system so that in the event that there was, you know, we don't believe there will be, but in the event that there is a catastrophic failure, that there would be funds available uh, to rebuild those impacted areas. Uh, finally, we, um, we discussed at the last hearing uh, the planting of a Abravite row along the eastern edge of the array. Um, this would be a, a screen of uh, what's called giant green abravite. Um, we have uh, put uh, those, that screen on a profile plan uh, that's on the, uh, you see it on the site plan, but we've also put it on a profile plan so that you could actually see the, the plantings and how uh, we believe they would provide an effective uh, screen uh, for the residents living along Alexander Road. Uh, we also brought um, specification sheet on the G giant green Abravite. Um, if that's information the board uh, would like to have, we'd be happy to hand that out. So um, we've tried to, uh, as best we can, address some of the concerns that we're hearing both from the board and from abutters. And um, uh, we believe next week when we resubmit <coughs> our plans that we'll, we'll have those details available for you. Okay. Thank you. Through the chair. Yes. Um, while it's on the fr fresh on the top of my head, if I may ask you a question about the Arborvites versus other. Okay, why well, we have screening as a specific item. Yes. So why don't we take it at that point? Because I also have <coughs> Arborvites. Okay. So, we'll, so we have, if you look at the outline. Can I just follow up? We had, at the last meeting, the board had requested a legal opinion um, from town council regarding the access rights. Um, I just wanted to follow up that that legal opinion was sent the next day. Town Council had asked for some additional information from the property owner. I have not received that yet, so that's why we do not have a legal opinion okay. or legal response. Thank you. Yeah, and, and we're working on that, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Cherko has spoken to the building inspector, uh, and we will be producing something in writing to the board within okay. the next couple of days. Okay. Thank you. Through the chair? Yes. Uh, on this side of the, the table, we're not, I don't know if I can. I can't see too clearly the first chart. Was that showing a diagonal or uh, a changing of the angle of the, of the board, of the uh, panels? Is that what we saw? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Um, the site plan, was that the site plan you're referring yeah, the to? First, the first chart. Is that unchanged from what we? Yeah, we don't, we don't have that in our packet, so. Is that the original plan that was submitted, or is that a new plan? Yeah, this is the index plan that was submitted. Yeah. Originally. So this is not the change one that he's referring to with the That's new right. panel. Oh, right. oh, okay. Okay. No. Right. That was the confusion. Yeah, what we've done is we've taken this plan and we've we've put a um, um, a layout of a proposed uh, screening plan on it, and then we've also submitted <coughs> a revised profile plan so that you could okay. see the profile with the arborvitaes planted. Chairman, question, and this is regarding to the changes that they're proposing. Um, so I applaud you guys taking a, another look at potentially reducing the array on that eastern, um, or the size of the eastern array. One of the things I'm interested in is especially on the stormwater runoff. And as you kind of go through with the new calculations to determine what's the impact, potential impact, if you can even do this, of you know water that would flow down so maybe with the original proposal x amount was going to flow down into the the wetland area but by reducing the number of panels let's say by 10 percent that's actually going to result in a reduction of runoff of 10 percent so is it kind of uh, is my point kind of clear on that just just to kind of get clarity around be, how much water is actually going to go down so yes you're going to reduce it reduce the size of the array what type of impact is that going to have on the yeah, we, we, So why, 
Why don't we address yeah. that in stormwater? I Manhattan? saw that, but I didn't want to kind of lose it. Okay, so that's, we say that's, it. And this is pertinent. Think about it. <laughs> but this is pertinent to the changes that they're <laughs> right. the, the proposing for next week. Okay, seven Thanks, on the outline. Detailed discussion. What we're going to do is have the applicant talk about uh, the item. Then we'll have comments and review by the board, and then we'll open up to the public for comments on on each of the items. So I ask if you have a comment. The first item, which is a, a site layout, uh, good point to discuss um, items related to that. If you have, because as you have noticed, we all have short memories here. Uh, oh, if, speak for yourself, John. If you want to discuss lighting or something like that, um, the way we take notes, et cetera, it, it, it kind of enforces at that time. So it may mean you're hopping up and down a little bit more, but we, we appreciate it. So the first item on the detailed discussion is site layout. Can I kind of walk through in more detail? Um, yeah, would be happy to, John. Could I ask you to, to do that, please? Yeah. So this is this is the overall site that has the the Cherco property off of Lumber Street, this existing access driveway coming uh, in off Lumber Street. There's solar rays that are proposed on the northern side of Cherco property. This is the Cherco house in this area here, and this is the overall of of the property that's involved here. So using the existing driveway, <coughs> the solar arrays oriented east and west. Uh, across the Cherco property. An access driveway coming off of Cherco's paved driveway here. This would be a gravel drive. It will allow for maintenance vehicles to get up and service vehicles uh, into the solar array. A hammerhead turning area here where they can park essentially um, and, and you know, access all this uh, NSTAR array portion where there's the layout Sort of oriented in a, in a north to south area, providing offsets from the wetlands. There's a potential vernal pool here, as well as a potential vernal pool um, up at the north side within this area. And this, I think, is the easiest plan to look at to even overall for the layout of, of the full property. Within here, there, there are detailed plans that I could get to if you have specific questions. But there are stormwater management basins within here that are going to be very shallow. They're in the neighborhood of a foot or so deep. So um, it's, not a, it's not what you might consider a pond or anything like that. They're just very shallow depressions, as well as some, some drainage swales that'll pick up the surface water runoff flowing off of the, the site and direct that to other uh, stormwater management basins throughout the site. So that's the general layout. Again, access off the existing driveway, a new proposed gravel access. Look at the, the array, the, the Cherco array here, and then what we call the NSTAR array. This used to be an inside parcel of land uh, in there. And there are residential abutters back in here. There's, there's some town on land in here. Um, and then there's the, uh, the Sportsman's Club abutter here, as well as and some uh, individual landowners here and around the eastern side. Okay. Comments? Questions? I have one. Through the chair, did you say um, that there would be a gap between the two sets of arrays for the wildlife to get through? Yeah, that, that's something that's, so that's not recently done yet. come up. That okay. Based upon comments that we've received, we are agreeing to provide a gap between the arrays, and that gap would be in this area here, so the wildlife traveling up could cut through. Um, so I know you don't have a drawing of it. Cut the sportsman's club, I guess, yeah. if they'd like to. So there would be two set, two different fences around each different area. That's so right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Through the chair. Can you point out uh, for the viewing audience at home uh, where the hundred foot and fifty foot buffers are on the uh, north parcel? This being the north parcel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's bordering vegetated wetland here. There's also uh, a potential vernal pool here. It has not been confirmed as well as a potential vernal pool up here and there are there is wetland vegetation around that so the hundred foot buffer zone is this line here and then off of this wetland here that's the hundred foot 
this slide here is not going to provide. Thank you. I do have a question. Um, you mentioned earlier about uh, removing some panels. Uh, your how, how far back? Uh, how, how much of a difference would that make from from what your original plan was? The CEC is still analyzing that in terms of how much they can move this back. Um, I don't think they've they've identified specifically yet how much, but. They still need to keep yeah, this We're going through that exercise Okay, right so we don't have an answer for that yet. I, I don't, I'm sorry, okay. but we will give it to you next okay. week when yep. we submit revised plans. Right, thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Just for clarity, you referred to the two properties as the Churco and the NSTAR, but it's the same owner, right? It's absolutely okay. the same owner. It's okay. just previously. Yep, so thank you. Through the Chair. Um, on the NSTAR parcel, uh, quote unquote NSTAR parcel. The elevation goes uh, goes up as you go east to west? It goes up from, from east to west, that's correct. So it slopes up. Okay. Yes. Lower to east. The wetlands are typically in the low areas. The sure. wetlands are low and then it goes up there. And do we know if there's a connection between the, uh, <laughs> the wetlands in the upper portion versus the. There's not a direct connection where it flows to here. I think that both of these end up. Probably connecting somewhere up to the north. Okay. This goes flows generally northerly. I just have one. The gravel driveway, how wide? The connecting uh, driveway, for lack of a better. I believe that's a, a twelve foot driveway. Okay. Jennifer, is that something we need? Probably you'd want the fire chief to look at it. Yeah. We certainly met, spoken with the fire chief okay. about this. Yeah. This is actually. Yeah, I, th yeah. I think we discussed it at the issues. last meeting. He yeah. didn't have any issues. Feet? I just want to point it out. I, I think he feet. said that he would have no problem getting like brush fire equipment up there. That's just, what he meant, right? Because yeah. he doesn't. That's just double check. Ambulatory type thing. The uh, the example at the time was if there was a, a person working on the panels for whatever reason and they had a heart attack, could uh, they get to them easily or not? The, yeah. the chief said that. Chief was okay. okay with that. Yeah. Any other comments from the board? Any comments from the public related to site layout? No. Then we can put a checkbox, check next to site layout. So the main driveway width, which uh, we discussed the gravel driveway. Uh, should we hold open the anything related to the driveway until we get that? I will. Open? Okay. So we're gonna push that off to the side until we get the letter from council on the, the driveway. Uh, lighting. There, there is no lighting. There's no lighting. Can we do a check next to lighting? <laughs> do a check there. X that. <clears throat> uh, screening. So I think this is the uh, tree uh, discussion. So why don't you discuss kind of <clears throat> where you are now and your thought process and I wouldn't mind that information package. Oh, sure. Happy to. Yeah. Join if us. you've got copies of that, I think it would be. Yeah, I'd take one too, please. <clears throat> so while we're waiting for those to be handed out, may I? Well, um, when you have the present, and then. Well, it, it has to do with the Arborvitae. So I'd, I'd like to, to bring that to the forefront right now. So my question to you back when was um, the Arborvitae seemed to be the go-to for everybody to do a screening with. And I'm wondering why that is so prevalent when there are so many uh, indigenous trees that we could put that have height, that have um, aesthetics, have color, have um, the lack of um, animals eating them by um, arborvitaes tend to be if they're not in direct sunlight to lose their lower um, their lower branches because of lighting not being established to them I'm wondering why we can't go something outside the scope of arborvitaes if you're still looking for a buffer well, through you, Mr. Chairman, we're happy to consider an alternative. Uh, based on our experience, and we've done these all over the state, the giant green aprovides, they're deer resistant. They grow very well. 
They provide a solid screen. Um, they provide habitat for birds and other wildlife. So they've been, for us, very effective. But if, if there's an alternative um, that you'd like to suggest, we're, we're certainly open to it. Is it, is it predicated on height and... and it, height and, and, and ma density. Mass. Screening, uh, effectiveness of screening. Does it hinder you to have an arborvitae there that is going to be giant, that is going to grow two feet per, per year, that probably in girth, another two feet in girth per year as it, as it grows, is that going to affect your array by ex sun exposure to have those up there? And if not, then why aren't we looking for something more in line with what we grow on scenic roads and, and of, the, of that nature? Why aren't we looking at that rather than the, the generic arborvitae? Yeah. That's, 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 my, that's, that's my concept about trees. Quick question to Chair. Are you referring to more evergreens or deciduous? No, uh, de deciduous trees. Okay, I, because I, I think they wouldn't have any screening in the winter if that was the case. I may say the Chair. Um, I do think that uh, Cliff is correct. It is a go-to uh, plant. Um, when I was on the Conservation Commission, uh, it, it was probably the, the most used of, of all the uh, uh, shading privacy type of plants. Um, but there were others used. Uh, uh, it is, but it is the one that's most often used. Okay. So, um, so, so and and my brother just just mentioned something clearly was that during the winter months, it, you know, the leaves fall off and yada yada yada. But um, I, I know there's hollies. I know there's a lot of other things that that don't lose their trees. That, I mean, and, and we're trying to 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 throw aesthetics. Hollies change colors and and are beautiful. And um, I mean, why do we we always fall to that nature of of? Well, if I can suggest, well, I don't know if somebody has come up with some suggestions, we can get to the applicant before the next meeting. Um, any other? But just on that point, I know that some neighbors on the walk mentioned a preference for some variation in screening. I have no expertise in that area, but it's worth um, it's worth investigating what would be okay. attractive and feasible and most welcome. Did you say you had a comment <coughs> about screening? You, yeah, I have a. Do we have a? Uh, with the passing of our tree warden, do we have a replacement? A replacement or um, someone we can go to for advice? So the uh, director of public works, John Musterling, is stepping in until a new tree warden has been hired. Okay, I'll contact you. Contact them and see. Uh, looking at at arborvitaes, what are you looking at? Number to plant, uh, guesstimate, and what height to plant initiative? Initial height to plant. Um, Doug, uh, could you address that, please? Thank you. Hi, uh, Doug Carton with Clean Energy Collective. So we are proposing a 400 foot stretch at 10 foot spacing, uh, six foot planted. They grow roughly three feet per year. Um, so height does become an issue eventually. We do maintain them um, once they start shading the array, but we want them to fill in as much as possible before we start doing that, um, because obviously it will stunt the growth a bit. Uh, so you're talking about 40, if it's 400? Yeah. Okay. So, so you, are you saying you trim them when they get to a certain height? Is that yeah, we just need to maintain them in order to avoid shading issues. In so the at, at <laughs> what height do you trim them? Because this says uh, these grow to 50 to 60 feet. Um, which obviously seems to me like that could be great height, yeah. but at uh, what point so it will all be based on, um, you know, whether or not it's posing a shading issue to the array. So it will be distance to the actual um, array from that plant. So it's going to be varying throughout the site, as you see, it kind of um, moves away from the eastern line and, and goes towards it in some places. I would say, on average, it's probably somewhere between 15 and 20 feet. Okay, so even though these will grow larger, you, we wouldn't allow them to get that high? No. no. Okay. 
if I can follow up on your comment, yeah. I think knowing and putting something in knowing what the height would be, uh, because the idea of it screening, and I'm going to be absolutely absurd and say you decide that anything over eight feet <laughs> is interfering with the array, that's not something we would want. So getting knowing exactly what you're talking about as far as the height is concerned. Yeah. Uh, if I may, for the chair to yeah. kind of respond to both uh, these points, uh, as they've provided a tree line view, uh, I think might, what might be helpful to the, the planning board is uh, the uh, the opposite angle uh, of what uh, sunlight you need, and which would decide how tall the operators would get. So um, the tree line shows us one way, and then maybe the sunlight view. I'm not sure what, what that's. I know there's a word for it. Did you just uh, say 15 feet? Though? 50. I, I would yeah. have to guess. You know, 15 to 20 would be my guess, but oh, yeah. uh, yeah. it's roughly 23 degrees from from the array that you would want to maintain. Yeah. Uh, so that all has to do with the distance from the array and where and exactly it, it's, yeah. it's planted. Uh, but yeah, that shouldn't be an issue to come up with. We could identify the heights that we would typically want to maintain them in. That's all going to tie into the, the revised layout because we are moving things back, so that allows greater growth. What's the detriment to starting with a taller tree? Besides, it's more expensive. <laughs> uh, it can be difficult to establish a taller tree. You, you use a smaller tree, it's much easier to establish growth. So where you have a very fast growing tree, it can be advantageous to have small, start with a smaller tree and allow it to grow a more substantial root base at a shorter height. Um, they're also less prone to falling over in that case. So you typically wouldn't want to plant a um, a green giant abervitae in the 9 to 10 foot range because it just becomes troublesome. So typically what you would find is you, you would cap it around 6 to 7 feet. So most of the time we spec 5 to 6 feet to allow a, a substantial root base by the time it's at a more mature height. Okay. And just for clarification, Mr. Chairman, for clarification, this is going to be along the eastern edge correct. of the easternmost array only, correct? Correct. That's correct. So if I may ask while you're up there, the chair. <coughs> so uh, on soil preference, it says the, the green giant abervitae tolerates a wide range of soil textures. Poorly drained or wet sites should be avoided and is a, and is a, a very salt sensitive. So we have, we have wetlands <coughs> over there that are poorly drained and now we're adding trees that don't like that. You're absolutely correct. The wetlands aren't fully drained by definition. These aren't being planted in the wetlands. The, the soil is testing out there. These are good, well-drained soils in the upland areas. Okay, so how far are we away from the wetland then? Um, uh, it, it varies, but um, you know, 60, 80 feet. 60, 80 feet. Okay, it's a long way. That's a long way. That's good. And I again, just wanted to make it. Yeah. You know, again, in our experience, we've had so much success on other projects very similar to this. We're confident that it would provide an effective screen. Okay. Um, do you have room uh, between the row of our upper varieties to maybe put some, something more ornamental or something that's going to look a little better than just having a wall of green uh, blocking the blocking the panels? Is, it, is there room to put other trees, like a second layer? No, I th uh, well, I'll let Doug, he's much more experienced than I, but with the 10 foot spacing, I think I think the Aprovite would basically grow into each other and, and produce yeah. that solid screen that we'd right. be looking for. Right, I mean, I guess it's more from the perspective of the homeowners that are looking at this thing, and it's just gonna be a big green bush that they have to look at every day. Can you make it prettier? So. We'd definitely be open to, to other plantings if there's something the board prefers. The, the idea that we came up with was that as far as um, existing overstory, the areas that we're not clearing, that's going to create most of your visual buffer. So what we're doing by planting um, the thick, low, green abrovite is allowing that, that understory to be blocked as well, where all you're really seeing is the trunks of trees otherwise. So uh, the idea was that they would kind of blend together over time. You would 
kind of have both understory and overstory, mm -hmm. um, but with the goal of having the most substantial screening that you could to start with. But like I said, uh, absolutely open to any suggestions on the plan. Um, so it looked to me like the Arborvitae um, stops right in section one. It looks like there's about three or four arrays that aren't really blocked by the Arborvitae. I guess there's just a little concern that the neighbors might be able to see those arrays. Very tall. Looks like the at the very top, at the very top <laughs> section one, tall. like there's a Seward <coughs> property and the Ryan property. Uh, yeah, so support what Amy's saying. We we did discuss this at the we last did. meeting yes, whether that you would uh, look into furthering it uh, north. Is that north or yes. south? North. 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 Yeah, I believe it was stated at the last meeting. Um, by the applicant that you couldn't see any housing from that farthest uh, northern corner and you absolutely could I believe we, we when we stood stake. at that stake um, we saw the home that was right in front yeah, of I it. think in fact you mentioned it I did yeah it was it was very obvious so I would agree with Amy um, I do believe the the arborvitae should extend all the way to the corner for sure on the north side. On the north side, yeah. Okay. Is that possible? Is that feasible? Or is that kind of well, I would say it's it's something we can definitely look into. The idea originally was just based off of our site walk and where we thought it was most effective to place the plantings, but um, if the board feels that it's it should be done further north, then certainly do that I mean it looks like it's gonna be no more than another 30 40 feet right I mean we're talking three or four more trees yeah can I just we ask you six more on 50 60 I think and I'm just eyeballing it so yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. 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 It's more just through the cherry I'm sorry I just I'm trying to get a visual uh, I know we talked also at the last meeting that it's completely impossible to shade it 100% like we can't screen it 100% from um, people's bedrooms etc but I am trying to understand from a visual especially when we're when we have the rays going up a um, up a hill if we're talking a 15 20 foot arborvitae are you able to approximate um, how much is going to be um, Visible? Or are we talking that twenty percent of the rays are going to be vis visible? Eighty percent are visible. I'm just, just trying to understand. Yeah, like I, when I saw that, I, I still don't really have a clear understanding of what the um, residents are going to see. From the first floor or second floor? Uh, well, I guess from both. I, th I think they provided us with both a, a, a first floor and a second floor. No, no, just, just the first floor. Just the first, first floor. floor. Yeah. We did talk about you would provide us with a second floor uh, visual as well. At the last mm -hmm. meeting, I, I did ask for that um, that so. we um, that we get that. Mr. Jack. Yeah. So in response to that, what we have provided is a, essentially a height divide from the first floor yeah. to the various houses. The house is about six feet high. And it varies from array to array, array to array in terms of the view. Yeah. <coughs> in terms of where it would be. So, for example, at the um, profile number one, which is far this north one, the view from just the arborvitaes themselves mm -hmm. would screen most of the the array. And the other one, it would do a little bit more than half of it. This uh, here, it would, it would get maybe a, a third or so. Um, and then this one here. It's going to screen the, the front view of it. But again, the, the other trees, that's getting it up right. to the understory. Then when we get start getting higher, we start getting the fuller, more mature trees of the forest to provide that other screening that's up high. And that's, and that's based on a 15 or 20 foot arbor body, that, that's that about visual? That's 15 foot arbor about body. Okay. So that right there. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but the second, if we were to put this up another Ten feet or so yeah. for a person standing on a second floor, it's you know it's another dashed line that's drawn in there. Um, but really, that armor body is not going to screen much from the second floor. But then you're you're up into the mature, the more mature trees, the branch heights. Yeah. Just a question of clarity, through Mr. Chair. It, so 
where's the 15 foot line? Is it the dotted line or is it? The little dark one. Actually, so this, this person right here, yep. that, that's a person, yep. <laughs> six foot high person. Okay. At this scale, okay. And Standing so at that's showing line. from his height of eye, there's a dashed line that comes out here that essentially trims over the top of the outer bodies. So it's, it's a line of sight that's being shown with this lower dashed line. These upper lines are just saying, okay, for the for right. where the trees are when the trees are mature. That's so that's a know. six foot line. So it's one, one of the top of the trees will be like 15 feet? Oh no, the, the top of these trees are a heck of a lot more than 15 yeah. feet. No, but where would the 15 foot be? The 15 be in foot the high line would start you know, back in this area right here. Okay. So Why don't you point out the arborvitae, which yeah. might be. He did. Right. That's right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you. you know, with, a, with a straight edge, yeah. if, I, if I went higher and went down, you know, yeah, no, that's perfect, it's thanks. Now that you show the everybody with the dotted line. If I may, for the chair, in the future, uh, it might be useful to show on, on this type of uh, graph um, where the property lines are, where the buffer zones are, um, so we can have that horizontal view uh, for clarity. I think we show roughly the property lines in here. Uh, property lines are labeled on here. This vertical line, or is this boundary okay. line? Uh, but I, I, you're correct. They don't show the buffer in there. When we talk about screening, uh, what pops up at some point, and I know there is an answer to it, but people who haven't worked with it uh, tend to ask the question. So I'll ask the question in case somebody thinks about it afterwards. Talk about reflection. So we're talking about screening, talk about reflection off the solar panels and how that's controlled, if in any case. Because so I know the answer because I've done this before, but most people don't know that. <laughs> yeah, all solar modules at this point use an anti-glare coating. Um, glare is kind of the, the enemy of, of solar. You know, anything that would be reflecting off is energy loss. So that's actually a very high priority when you're creating solar modules. It's the easiest way to increase efficiency in a module is to reduce glare. Um, so it is something that is very well studied and um, definitely taken into account by every module manufacturer. You will find that um, there's a lot of airports and stuff around that have solar because the glare really isn't an issue at this point. Uh, with some of the older modules in the 70s and 80s, it was much more of an issue where they didn't develop those anti-glare coatings. Um, but at this point in time, it really hasn't been an issue. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the board? Any comments from the public? Question. If you want to come up, identify yourself and your address. Hi, Michelle Stillwell, 63 Teresa Road. What happens if the trees die, the screening trees, for disease or any other reason? We would replant them. Forever? Uh, typically for the life of the project. Which is? OK, thank you. It's a race to the microphone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chris Hagberg, 22 Alexander. Um, so I, I can see that the trees and I was looking for this in the packet last time so I know I'm sorry that this was shown last time but I couldn't find it in the packet that was available for the meeting but anyway yeah. I think that's a little deceptive because the trees that are there okay yes we're concerned about that six foot tree that's next to the seven foot fence so there's a seven foot fence that goes around the array that fence is lifted up eight inches. So it actually sits up higher than seven feet. And then you're showing a six foot tree. And then the elevation, that is our hill. I don't, I mean, you can see that that really doesn't screen much of anything. And I'm not sure that that's an accurate depiction of the elevation either, but. So I just want to say that I don't think that those pictures are quite accurate and that you want to pull those trees out and show the arborvitae, which is six foot arborvitae next to a seven foot fence. If I may, to the chair. Please. And while you're there, um, as they so aptly put right from the beginning is that the trees grow 
three feet a year. Yep. And, and they they'll do, be capped at 15 feet. Yeah, but yeah. but what they, in order to establish a good root system, and I'm a tree hugger, so I'm going to leave that one alone. But but um, so the root system is imperative for the tree to grow, and you don't want to trim it back, at, like he was saying, before the root system has has time to to adhere. I think eventually you you will get the the sought after effect that you're looking for. It's just a matter of how how to to move forward to get that effect. You, they can plant, they can drop them in and, and hide everything for you, but that'll be continually redoing them. And, and, mm -hmm. and a, so we've got to have a little bit of foresight to see that the, the growth of those are going to change dramatically over one or two years, and you'll be in a place where it's going to start to overtake that situation. Yeah, they'll be 15 feet tall. Uh, they can go up to 50. They won't yeah, allow, but they're not yeah, going to. Yeah, they won't to allow them to. to. Right, right. But at, but the density of the girth of them is going to marry into and each other too. It's a hill. Yes, so I understand. Still, you, we are still no matter what. It's looking up a hill. These will be visible no matter what you try to screen it with. Okay, so so then my my closing point to this would be that um, if 15 or 20 feet, say let's say it's 20 feet max, doesn't do it and they're still looking for that 23 degree sunset thing and, and there's still room for them to do it. I'm sure that they would go up higher at, if, if it were a feasibility, right, for the, for the arrays, that you could go up higher and still maintain that blanket of, of um, visualization. Question through the chair. Can we confirm the height of the fence? I had thought it was going to be shorter than seven feet. Seven feet. It is seven feet. Yeah. And it will be off it's the ground. It's a code requirement. Okay. And it would be raised off the ground by six so eight in inches. So uh, the height. No, typically six inches, we, we spec an eight inch max um, just to keep it reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want it to be you know, easily passable by somebody crawling underneath. Uh, but that's just we for wildlife to be able right. to Right. So wildlife could so get seven under. Feet. Okay. So seven and a half feet. Mr. Chairman, if I may, is there um, a scenario where you could see it going, the arborvitae, higher than 20 feet? Because if they're on the left, the, the eastern side, you're only going to kind of get impacted with the morning sun. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's a calculation that you use, and in theory, it's probably only going to impact one or two of the panels. If you double that to 40 feet, What's the impact to the to the to the panels on that? And have you ever done that in the past? Allowed for more than a twenty foot height on the um, on the, the arborvitae? Yeah. So typically, we would want the arborvitae to be you know as close to the abutter as possible, and as far as away from the from the array as possible, sure. so that it can do as much as it can. Unfortunately, this is a scenario where right up against wetlands, so we really can't be planting it that way. Um, so. Uh, to your point where it's on the eastern side, where I'm actually looking when I do my shade analysis is almost like a, it'd be the, the impact to the, the tree to the, or the, the module to the northwest of it, right? So I'm not looking directly west, I'm looking northwest. Yeah. Because that's where the sun yeah. comes up and it's shading back in a way. Um, to the side, you can certainly do much more than 23 degrees because you're really not getting that right. sort of the angle. The angle of the sun. Um, so it all depends on where the final layout ends up. Uh, just 15 to 20 feet is a pretty, pretty rough number, but uh, you know, if we're able to pull the model back to 25 feet, um, then you would be looking at guessing around that 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Just as a reference, this is in the package, page 14. <coughs> so you want to, because I have it up on my screen. Yes, sir, your name and Good evening. Uh, Andrew Singer, 16 Alexander Road. Uh, I would urge the board to require uh, renderings of the maximum heights of the arborvitae, inclusive of the trimming. I mean, as the um, consultant has said, he does shade analysis. They know what the maximum will be. Um, and I think it would be very helpful for us to understand what those maximum heights will be, especially as they may be variable based upon the location. 
Also, I think we really need to get a better <coughs> understanding of the visuals, including the topographical uh, renderings. The neighborhood does not just include a butters. Uh, I live across the street. Um, the the um, elevation of my house is, is higher than the elevation uh, where the abutters are. And so it's almost, a, I think, about a straight line, um, up, although I'm not sure. When the trees come down and this goes in and then there are providing there, I'm not sure whether we will have full uh, view. Um, you know, with, with the further distance, it sounds to me like there's going to be less coverage. Um, I'm, I'm still, you know, not sure. These were these uh, drawings were shown the last at the last meeting, and uh, I really don't have any sense of what it will be from further away. Uh, I'm very concerned that in terms of the neighborhood, the neighborhood does not just include the abutters, and that we need to take that into account. Good point. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. So, what I'm about to say is my opinion but I didn't, I want to express it to you now, so if I should vote against this, I don't want you to say, well, he never made it his opinion uh, public, but what I'm thinking is that I'm not a fan of cutting down trees and, and putting solar panels there because, um, and I'm a total fan of putting um, solar panels on rooftops and every other place. Um, trees are the enemy of solar panels, right? It's not even just, the area of the solar panels, as we can see, excuse me, see with the screening, you really can't have trees near it because they're going to be blocking the sun. So, I just wanted to let you know that um, that's a concern for me for this project. The trees being cut? Yes. Okay. It, <coughs> as you know, the bylaw uh, permits it, so we, we're following. Um, there is notes in. The bylaw where if you feel it's um we don't have to prove this if you feel it's detrimental to the town and we are a, a green town we're trying to keep trees so that's just my opinion i respect that i if, if this i would just suggest to you that if this project were not <coughs> proposed I, I believe mr Churko has the right to go in and remove all of the trees provided they're outside of the wetlands jurisdiction um as and a i'd land be against owner. that as well so Excuse me? I would be against that also. So, I mean, yeah, we wouldn't have the um, option to stop him from that, but that's with current use of his property, not with solar panel use. Right, but I understand what you're saying. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, Rich Kleiman with the CEC team. Uh, just to, to address uh, Mr. Paul's comment, I, I think the standard under the bylaw is a reasonableness one, a one of reasonableness uh, in terms of the screening. Um, and, and while we appreciate we're trying our best to screen every view possible. It may not be perfectly possible to screen every view from everybody's second story window or completely across the street through 300 feet of woods and then the Arborvitaes and they might have some view partially through that, that forest. I mean, this is several hundred feet of woodland between there and the closest house and then uh, a, a row of arborvitaes that are going to be 15 to 20 feet high in addition to that. I think there's really very little more that we could do to to screen this project from from that residential uh, view. We, we, we're, we're trying our best and we're, we're, we're making best efforts. I think we meet the reasonableness standard of the bylaw. If I may, through the chair. Uh, each solar panel will offset um, uh, energy production by other means, like oil and, and, and things that do bad things to our environment. Um, so maybe you guys could show how much of that, how many trees you're, trees worth of oxygen you're saving by generating power, not by <coughs> other means. Um, that might be educational to people. Um, and, and perhaps a, a, our neighbor here across the way uh, there are other ways to, to maybe handle uh, screening. Maybe if, if it is a, uh, at when you have everything all redesigned and it's done and it's, and it's not uh, working for them, maybe we could look at maybe screening on their property. So, you know, 
I'm sure you don't want to see the houses across the street from you and blocking your view of the woods. I'm kidding about that. But no, I, you know, there, I'm sure you know, there's other ways to, to handle uh, a lot of the different angles that are being covered here. And before you make your statement, I want to just add on to what you said. We have in the past uh, permitted the proponent to do plantings, obviously with the, uh, based on the agreement of the property owner. But in some situations, we've allowed the plantings to take place on the adjacent property owner's land um, to provide coverage there where it was more effective there than on the proponent's land. So I'll just throw that out there. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. I, I, uh, I don't intend to be redundant. Um, I would just question the, um, the statement about reasonable efforts. Um, I would just want to ensure that reasonable efforts are made from the drawings that I have seen. I don't feel that I have really any sense that um, screening, even from distance, um, will be, will be um, sufficient or you know, even minimally acceptable. So um, I would just urge the, um, the board to use its best efforts to ensure that that work is done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yes. <clears throat> I think what we need to be looking at is is what our regulation says, <clears throat> uh, which is that we should not permit a use that is injurious, noxious, offensive, or detrimental to the neighborhood. And and I think it, it's that seems that's what the standard is as to whether or not this project would be detrimental to the neighborhood or noxious. Or, um, I mean, I think you can't have any project that's going to screen it at 100%. I think we understand that. And I guess the real question is, have they taken reasonable measures to avoid being detrimental to the neighborhood? I'm just thinking out loud here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my question to that is, what additional measures can they do, or would you suggest that they do, in order to create a level of <coughs> comfort if I, if I could, because I actually have kind of a follow-up to that. Um, I'm, I am curious, because I, I don't know, um, you know, I'm not going to lie, this is my first time dealing with a sol solar panel um, project. So I'm curious, you know, it seems to me like um, we're not going to have 100% screening. I just, it doesn't sound like that's going to happen. So the question is, is it reasonable effort being made? So I think we have to obviously... Uh, look at that and, and ask ourselves, are they making every reasonable attempt to screen to the best of their ability? Are they listening to what the neighbors are saying? Are they listening to what we're saying? But as far as um, detrimental impact, like one of the questions I have would be property values. Um, do we have any kind of historical data that shows how a solar panel farm that backs up to a neighborhood um, that is visible does that have any impact on property value? I mean, to me, that would be, I think, an important question to ask that would determine whether or not this is detrimental to a neighborhood. I mean, clearly, if, if home values are impacted negatively, that would be that would be a big concern, I would think. So I don't know if that I don't know if that exists. Yeah, I don't have the answer, and I'm certainly not an assessor. Yeah, I do know that there is another uh, solar project uh, that was approved by this board, not this board, but by the planning board. And um, I don't know. I would say that's a question the assessors could ask um, as it relates to the other project that was permitted. Well, I think the other project was a little bit was different because of where it's located. <laughs> and what's probably negative to that is the one house that is probably closest to it has been on the market probably <laughs> for seven months and hasn't been able to sell. So I don't know if I would have brought that one up. But it's a good point because I don't know if there is any. Yeah, um, Jennifer, do you want to see if there's any data available on that? And if I may, through the chair. Go ahead. All right. Um, the, the part about what our chair has said in regards to the closeness of the proximity to the array versus the homeowner's visualization, would it 
be against your better judgment to put a, maybe your your tree your arborvitae your, your giant arborvitae in their yard to stop them from having to see that or I mean I don't I don't I don't I'm not asking you to go around to every neighbor and say look we'll throw some trees in your yard to, to block the view but that's that, that it's, this is a two-part thing that I'm thinking about right now and so the, the first part is to um, John's um, suggestion is that we're not adverse to, to coming up with a way to work together for that to be the best scenario right okay so then the next scenario is as I brought to my <coughs> my sister here in regards to the six-foot arborvitae sitting in in the proposal now with a seven and a half foot fence we bring them in at six feet um, the visualization line that you so aptly pointed out or, or one of your associates pointed out from where you stand point at a six foot man looking straight across that six foot arborvitae for the first year is not going to do much of anything right because it with each array there's four arrays that we're talking about right now with each array one is different than the next and one covers a, a further distance the next one less and the next one less and the next one less as the trees develop and grow then that will be that that sight line would be raised higher and higher that you wouldn't be able to see through am i correct right I believe so. okay so so then one of your affiliates also said that well we you know that we can't go planting the trees there because you know any more trees because it it's a budding wetland and it's not it doesn't it's not a good thing but then we discussed how the distance of 90 feet or 100 feet or 200 feet or 300 feet whatever that that looks like is there um, so we have a little bit of a contrast between why we can plant and why we can't plant what we're planting and what we can't plant now I'm not trying to to to, to make it all um, be all mixed up but I think that if you were to back like you, you're trying to do move the panels back a little bit and give yourself some footage between the two and then you can create a better buff buffer that would allow you to grow a, a higher tree this would be suitable and helpful to, to everybody now again it it harkens back to our bylaws that say as long as it doesn't impede the neighbors and and you know we we have cohesiveness throughout the community this is something that we all have to look at on both aspects of the yes or no special permit and and you are working well to to, to refine it and to get it to where it needs to be but the viability of of a neighbor that isn't in a butter comes up and says well we've got we've got an issue because we're not in a butter but we can see clearly that that is that is in our field of view then we have another board Excuse member me, that Clef, says oh, i just want you to need you to wrap it up because I'm, I'm the gonna, hearing ends at i'm gonna 8 30 and i wanna so so then we have we have one of our board members that says well we we have a, a due diligence to give everybody in the community um a, a fair shake and, and does it affect property value all of these things we don't know about right but but that being said we have to we have to really look at not just the abutters and and the impact of of visualization but how it impacts the community in a, in a, in a whole and that's what we're the board is designed to do as well as to look out for your interests as well so I, I, I'd like that to be said okay thank you mr. chairman real quick I'll so I know you have to move on in the agenda um, as, as far as the plantings and screening goes um, we, we are trying to work with the neighbors and and the board as much as we can and I will continue to do that and, and talk talk to some of the neighbors who've spoken tonight further um, uh, but the other thing I wanted to mention about property values, uh, while uh, Ms. Carp made a, a good point about that, I think there's literature out there, I've looked at it, both sides, um, and it's non-conclusive, and 
the board does have to be a little bit careful about arbitrariness, and in particular with the AG's ruling about how solar bylaws can be applied and trying to apply university studies or whatever to uh, a planning board decision about detriment to the neighborhood based on inconsistent studies is a very dangerous path to go down. So. Good point. I'm going to wrap this up because we have the other here. What I would suggest as if you didn't get the message already is screening is probably not the major issue, one of the major issues. So as much creativity, as much use of uh, varying types of plantings, varying locations between where you're showing it, and there may be a couple of places on the neighbor's properties if they're open to it. If that's a better look at everything, be creative. Um, because I think this is the one, one area. You, you have a difficult situation in that in the other solar property, the terrain was different. So you didn't have this. In effect, the houses were on the higher side and with a relatively low, you kind of looked over them. Um, but um, be creative, we, and we I will, think you can get. We will do our best. Yeah. Talk to talk to the neighbors. I'm sure they're happy to uh, meet with you. <laughs> and if some of you feel Isn't open, that? let me just finish. If some of you feel open to actually, if you have a concern on upper floor visibility, if you don't mind, you know, show them out the window. Go ahead, ma'am. You saw the wetlands that were, plant, that were put in this array behind? Well, our right. homes are on the other side, so we're unable to plant. Right. Right. So we have that issue to deal with. It's not like yep. we can plant all these trees right. on our property. Right. I'm, I'm okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have to set the. Continued the continued hearing date. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, could I, yeah, could I make a suggestion? Um, one of the things I talked to uh, Don McAdam of the Conservation Commission in terms of going forward, because of the issue of trying to avoid an overlap between the two, is uh, possibly scheduling with the CONCOM the hearing the very first hearing at 730. And I thought if that was something that you think is workable, then perhaps we could limit that hearing to say an hour and perhaps come to the planning board at 9 o'clock or, or, or something to that effect so that there's enough time. Do we match up for the rest of the year with the CONCOM, do you know? So far, scheduled that way. Is it? Do they set times for you at the ConCom? So ConCom schedules everything at seven. First, you're first, but after that, it's up in the air. That's what I thought. Yeah. They schedule everything at seven thirty. They give them estimated times as when they'll be heard. But if things move quicker or if things get continued, you have to be ready to be heard by seven thirty. Okay. You seem to indicate there was flexibility yeah. about setting us first on the agenda, though. Okay. You're willing to We've had our fair, fair share of being at the end of the agenda, so we Don thought he could work with us on that. If we have a half hour in between. I, that works okay. for me. Yeah, okay. that's an intentional effort to yeah, I think okay. make it possible yeah, for people for sure. to Thank be you. above. What Thanks. do we have? <coughs> <coughs> yeah, we're pretty crowded. Uh, well, I was trying to look to see if the rest of the year... We, we don't in December we're off kill we're off schedule with them but um, November 13th we have a 7:30 7:45 and an 8:30 already so it might work if you can get on there's for 7:30 8:30 is for how long do you think it's a scenic road for 143 Spring Street okay what do you recommend for that time wise Based on the way other scenic road areas have gone recently with this board. What are they looking to do with Stonewall? That stone seems to be a fair point. <laughs> Both two, uh, these two trees and a portion stone of Stonewall for a new single family home. Just for just one home. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, yeah. I guess half an hour, but half I hour. know so how long the that one we... have gone. So. It seems like it should be an easy one. <laughs> really? Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like it should be. Don't. So why don't we say 9 o'clock? <laughs> yeah, let's try it. <laughs> I'm just, I said it seems. And seen. that's assuming you can get the commitment of ConCom at 7.30. Correct. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, you just need a vote to that. We need a vote. Please. You have a motion? I'll move, move that. Do we have first and second. we have a second? So 11 All in favor? 11.13 at 9 p.m. Is that Correct. Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so on that note, um, I December will be off kilter with Concom, which I, I, I think is better yeah. because they meet, we meet, they meet, we meet. Right. But then if we're all in the same building, maybe by December. But we're not. We were here we had that conversation. Uh -huh. We're not going back. We're probably going to be here. Yeah, yeah we've already had that conversation. I don't know. It looks like it's not going to be Are we going to break? Yes, let's take a five minute break. Just when you're asking to turn off the air.
we're going to open uh, the public hearing, continued public hearing, uh, 5060 West Main Street. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening. Okay. Do you want to hand over? Or? Yep, it's you. No, you're. All right, you're running with good it. Evening. Um, this is a continuation of the site plan review meeting for 5060 West Main Street. Um, at the last meeting, um, my understanding that there was going to be discussion with the applicants at the engineering group and with Beta, and it may be helpful just to provide a recap. I know that there was a communication, Jennifer, that was sent out today? Yes, we received today and I put it on your table in front of you tonight a letter from Phil Paranis at Beta. He's satisfied that they have achieved everything that he's asking them to achieve and that is considered the clean letter of report. Got it. So maybe just maybe a quick recap? Yep, yeah, uh, essentially there's uh, two, two detention basins that were drawn on the plan. Um, had some minor modifications to the first one that's in the location of the dumpster. Uh, got slightly larger uh, in size. Had, uh, Excuse me, one second. We didn't take a vote to open the. Oh, was that with the chair? So yeah, moved. So second. <laughs> oh, I'll second. Okay, all Sorry. in favor. Uh, all right. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Great, ahead. thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, We're wanting your words to Dave count. Dave I'm covering for Joe. Joe's at conservation for the same project. Uh, he should be here shortly. Um, so we have two detention basins on this project. Uh, the first one in the area of the dumpster, uh, number A, uh, got slightly larger. It provided uh, a uh, sediment floor bay, uh, rip wrap uh, aprons uh, and berm uh, with a five foot wide uh, spillway at the top. Uh, basin B, uh, slight modification, size is the same. Just had to flatten out the berm to a 10 foot wide. Um, minor modifications. Uh, report has been adjusted and as Jennifer said, everything's been satisfactory to fill. So there's nothing else outstanding with beta? Nope, that was the storm water was the final item and that closes that item out. So. Cool. <clears throat> so then I would look to continue on the site plan review document. I think that was a copy that's available outside for uh, any other members of the public. I think there were a couple additional items that were outstanding. Um, I'm sorry. Um, before we move on, sure. Just to um, clarify about the stormwater management, uh, everything you just said, I, I get. But uh, what I <coughs> specifically uh, get is what is the fix for the stormwater man um, what are the abutters uh, or Sandy um, Altamira okay. there she is how is a fix effective uh, for that um, stormwater pool so you're saying capacity capacity wise yeah because last time we spoke well, I guess it was your brother. Brother Joe. It was, it was being worked on and uh, didn't have the information in the last meeting. Okay. And then so you were saying, here are the fixes, but I'm not sure what the cause was. Yeah, um, so I guess um, what is different from um, now to what was previously, uh, we had a much smaller pond um, near the dumpster we made some modifications and adjusted the water into that first basin. That's like the first stage of it. And first stage yeah. of it, yeah. And then we're treating that water, and then we're taking that water out and then taking it down to the lower basin. So we're kind of, if you will, kind of splitting more of the water, adding more water to basin A, the top one, and less water to basin B. And that's an effective solution? It's in place? Uh, it's been discussed with Phil, and Phil was, Phil was happy with, with the... The, the quantity and quality um, and ratio of uh, what was going there previously to A and B and it's now been modified to adjust. It's not yet in, been, been implemented yet. 
Excuse me? And has been implemented yet because it's still in the plan. Correct. Right? It has to be adjusted. Okay. Correct. Yeah, we have to make modifications to the first one. Which was what you were outlining five minutes ago. Right? Correct. Okay. So, Frank, from the last meeting, I wrote down there are two issues. One was the catch basin, and the other yep. was the detention basin. I think it was the size of it, right? It was small. Correct. Um, so it sounds like those two issues have been addressed and Phil's beta is okay with what you guys are putting in place. Correct. Uh, Sandy, uh, please. I'm sorry. I, oh. Oh, oh, I, need my, think I need a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. It shocks me as well. Know, but. well we need your address. Okay. <laughs> 33 Elm Street. The entire um, drainage basin is behind my house. From here to here is their drainage basin. Uh, originally, that the whole drainage system was approved to go under the parking lot, which had already been disturbed, and they came back and asked for a variance, and they ended up taking down uh, uh, close to 100 trees, big, beautiful trees, to put this drainage structure in. Um, I need to know, uh, uh, are they expanding it? Is there going to be deeper standing water? Will I see a difference visually from uh, what's there? And if they need more capacity, should that be put back where it was originally approved under the disturbed parking lot rather than the drainage basin, which has already grown up with all the, the plants and everything around it? I'm not sure that this has been settled, really looked at and settled, and part of it's my fault. I haven't been here before, but I know the, the whole drainage structure was still in flux, and um, I'd like to know exactly what that's going to look like because it is completely behind my house. So uh, uh, is there more grading that's going to be done, or are the trees and, and vegetation going to be ripped out? Is it going to be left alone? Do they need a greater capacity? Uh, is it going to go back where it was originally approved. I'd like a little more detail, if I could have it, please. Yep, so. Essentially, the only modification, the only modification that was made down to the pond at Sandy's end is the end, the berm. On if the I can, I, I, I'm looking at it now, but for those who don't know, do you have a plan that you can point to which one we're sure. talking about? Sure. You can maybe turn it so it can the be camera, seen by the, the camera. The camera is right there. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know you don't have an easel per se, but. Mm -hmm. So Cindy's property is here. Okay. Uh, the existing detention basin is right here. This is the second one. This is the first one that got enlarged. The modification that's being made is right here on this end of the property here, on the basin here. This is getting a little bit larger, and the berm is getting raised. This side of the basin is staying the same. Small, small grading right there, but the essential right where the pen is, is the modification being made to that basin. Nothing on this side of the basin that remains all the same. Excuse me, where's my property? Yep. Yes, your property's right here. Uh, and what are you here's, doing here's here? The, here's the basin that's here. Right. Okay, this side, this side stays the same. Okay. This berm here is getting higher. How much higher? About uh, 1.8 feet. Okay, uh, and that's the only modification that I will see, and then it'll be received. Yep, yep, yes. All right, I have one other question while the board's all here. Sandy, yep. please. Uh, oh. No, 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 please. Go ahead. Continue. From the mic. Yeah, from, from, the mic. from the mic. Just the mic. <laughs> For our television audience. Mm -hmm. They want to hear you. Uh, okay. Um, I, I don't really have any objection to that, other than I never think that should have happened, but seeing it has, I don't have a a real problem with that. However, there's a lot of restoration work. Um, Frank remembers there was a stone wall, a nice stone wall, and it's tumbled down. It's extremely unsafe, and I'm seeing people walk behind the property that never walked behind the property. If they try and cross that wall, it's going to collapse on them. And there's still a lot of, um, uh, you know, the plastic to keep the, mm -hmm. the for the wetlands modification, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Is this all going to be restored? There also used to be an easy way for all the people from Elm Street to get over to Ice House Pond to skate and stuff. That was going to be restored. There was, uh, we would like to believe there would be a, a little trail just so you could get over to Ice House Pond. That never got put back in place. And I would like to know if this is going to be restored when this is done. Well, I don't know 
For which properties, uh, Sandy, you uh, are asking that we create trails from? Not really trails. Um, uh, there used to be a beautiful trail that went over with what was always called the not yet. That was all disturbed when you came down when, when, and the, the detention basin was uh, made. That's fine, but there's really nowhere to take children to walk over to get, to, to get the walkway around the pond. That's all been destroyed. Uh, there's, you know, there's fencing, there's poor grading, there's stone walls that are collapsing. The area needs restoration when you're done with your phase three. There is a small path that goes from the, today, from the end of the big pond down by the uh, backside, up and over the hill by the dumpster, and kind of weaves its way down and around to the. Uh, yeah, the you're pond. right. There is. There's no way for anybody from the other end of the street okay. to access it. They're okay. used to it. Right. So I just wondered if there, actually, if it was just restored, people would take their own walkway. Right. So. So are these people that would cross your property sure. to get? To there, that's your sure. suggestion. There's really not many. There's, and right now it's an older neighborhood, but there used to be a lot of kids, and everybody went skating there. And it's, yeah. it's just not convenient anymore. Yeah. Then, of course, I have the daycare, and we used to take walks and picnics all the time, and, and it's very difficult to access that now. Okay. If you, just for clarity, um, I'm not exactly sure where that path is. Can you show us on that? Yeah, I suppose. I suppose the path. Uh, the backside of this new berm could easily be connected to the existing path. Sure, but yeah. it doesn't need to be much. It's a little right. walkway. Essentially, um, the dumpster is here. And mm -hmm. There's a, probably a path that, that exists that probably some, somewhere in that area there. Probably right there. There's the path that's here today. That path here is a fork here, and that probably goes to about here. And then this here goes down to the dam. And around. So here's the new dam, here's the yeah. new berm that we're building, and probably the end of the existing path is probably about the pen. So it's probably very easy to connect that to the existing path, and that could get access from here, and then same thing would be here, yeah. but others as well. Awesome. There, is, there's a, there is a. And that's just a grass pathway? Yeah. 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 Okay. And did, did you say through, through the chair a dangerous stone wall somewhere? Or? Yes. Can we see that where right. that is on the map? Along the edge of the property, uh, it's just kind of an unfinished state when trees are removed, plants are removed, and it's uh, just there's phase three when everything's finished. Uh, right. So when it's going to be see where they're talking about. Uh, well, okay. where, where, Frank? Is that? Is it here? Is that along? Sandy, you show? No, no, no. Along the back <laughs> between yeah, Sandy's right. property yeah. and the okay. detention pond. Oh, right here. Let, let Sandy. Okay. Okay. It okay. So this kind is of. my property. Yeah. It's in. This area. This is the not yet. Oh, no. is the oh, oh, between the two. All right, this is the not yet. It is. That's not hill. Okay. So, so it's you're... like right here. Oh, there it is. The little stone. Yeah, that just needs uh, it, it, restoring of, of some sort. It's very oh, dangerous. They will lose because the, 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 the soil <laughs> is <laughs> soft. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they ha you guys had to kind of come right up to it and really undermine that old stone wall. And is this something? Is this something that a feasible solution between the abutter and the applicant could be worked on? I mean, we can restore the 50-foot section somewhat of the stone wall in the middle of our property. Sure, we appreciate that, Sandy. Would that work out? You yeah, it'll work out just fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you, everyone, for your cooperation on their sure. matter. And Sandy, appreciate your feedback and input. Uh, Board members, any other questions on the stormwater management? <coughs> I think there's some clarification. And uh, yes, thank you. Nice job. Um, uh, one, one yeah, um, so there shouldn't be standing water in the uh, detention basin at any time, right? I'll let him speak to that. I, I think that. I think, if I recall, there was a question as to there was a problem with the, with the basin because there was standing water. So the fix, there will be no standing water in there? I don't have particulars on that. I know that the, the floors have got readjusted, and I don't know if, if the outlet pipe on this one has been changed. I don't know. I can't answer that. My brother, when he gets here, should be able to answer that. But I, I don't have a. Could we table that for next week, maybe, or something? I can speak for a little bit, uh, since Joe isn't here. Uh, 
what we've done is we've added a secondary uh, pipe that's going to be uh, 15 inch, is that right? Uh, 15? Yes. A 15 inch pipe that's going to be taking all of the runoff from the new building uh, let me show you. Uh, from the, the parking lot that's existing at the west end of the property uh, right now, which was constructed after phase two. Okay. And before, all of the, the runoff from that, as well as the runoff stormwater from the roofs and so forth, went in a 24 inch pipe, which we constructed out to this detention basin. And there was uncertainty as to how much of the, as Joe was talking about before, how much of the, the groundwater from across the other side, the south side of West Main Street, may or may not have been you know, flowing this way and being picked up by, by the sub-slab drainage underneath the new building and feeding into that and creating uh, the more constant flow of water down there that, that created the, uh, the, the standing water there. So part of the fix that uh, uh, Maquadon and uh, Beta have come up with is we've now divided some of the, the flow so that we're now constructing a new line that'll be picking up the storm water from the parking lots which is out near the front, the second entrance out here, mm -hmm. and coming through there, picking up the storm water from the uh, paved area in this area on the rear of the parking lot, and then picking up <coughs> all of the new storm water that's coming off of the roof down through the downspouts from phase three, the new building, and feeding it into this new 15 inch line which is coming down here, and now discharging into this new basin. The new basin is being enlarged, as Dave said, to deal with mitigating that intermittent stormwater that was feeding down here. So what they've come up with are calculations that addresses the, the, the flow that comes when you have rains like we just had recently, uh, that'll be feeding into this area, and it'll now be going into here and going down into the groundwater. And then after it's been treated, only a certain amount of it will then go into the 24 inch pipe and feeding down there. So what they've come up with are calculations that supposedly uh, address that whole thing and split, like he was saying, uh, where the, the where the water goes, mm -hmm. storms versus groundwater. So you're still going to be picking up groundwater though. Well, as part of this solution, I mean, we, we don't know, but we're suspecting that that's what, what's happening. I mean, okay. when you have the wetlands across the street there, mm -hmm. and once things were put in place where you create a, a sub-slab drainage system underneath the initial building that acts like a sponge and it, you know, it, it tracks water. And so that's just part of the whole calculations of mm -hmm. what's going on. Whereas before, that may have been feeding into Ice House Pond. Now it's being you know, diverted back down to here. Mm -hmm. So then eventually it all flows into the, uh, the water as it comes out of Ice House Pond and continues down through the watershed area and so forth. Uh, but now it's just being affected by Different. the development that's taking place. Yeah. Right. So the goal here was to create a situation where it won't be standing there 10 months, 11 months out of the year. Okay. Does that answer your question? That answers my question. To the chair, uh, I want to say Carrie did a very good job of explaining in layman's terms uh, the part where it says the hydrocad model and the drainage calculations has been revised to model the existing conditions at the pond near the dumpster area, which is <laughs> way more complex, um, as, as he explained. Much better yeah. explanation. Good. Any other questions from board members on that? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, we can check off stormwater management. I think we can check it off now. Thank you. Um, I have one quick question. What happens if it doesn't work that way? All right, the, so the question from the audience was what happens if it doesn't work that way? So, uh, backup plan or, I mean, I, I, I don't have an answer on that. Yeah. What, we are, what we are doing also yeah. is we're, part of what uh, had taken place was that we're raising that discharge, the, the large uh, detention the basin, basin, which is in Sandy's backyard. We're cleaning out all the growth that's in there and Dave talked about some of the different changes that we're making in there. I talked about some of the additional ones, how we're splitting off the, the, the water into different areas. What we're also doing is we're raising the basin 
of the, the larger area uh, by I think 10 inches. Yeah. So it's, it's, gonna cr it's bringing us part of what the question was before was are we down in the groundwater, okay, the existing groundwater by being at the level that we were? And so after back and forth that Mark Ladon has done with, with, with Beta, they've, they've determined that if we bring it up 10 inches, okay, it's going to bring us up, I think, four feet above uh, the top of the groundwater, which will allow for the, it to take longer for it to get down into the groundwater, and she consequently won't see the standing water back there because we're raising the whole thing up. We're able to raise it up because we're now splitting up where the water goes with the first detention basin and the second detention basin. So, how? civil engineering works and how the calculations work, I can't speak to, so. So to that point, to the chair, if I may. Um, if you had said on your opening statement that that retention pond in the back needed to be cleaned out, now shouldn't that be done on a regular basis anyway? I think that that's part of what the uh, the, the proposal is that, that Beta and Markledon have put together is that we're gonna keep that clean so that it doesn't uh, become grown over and so forth, yes. Yeah, because uh, cause I think I was the one that brought up in the initial about the stormwater in front of the buildings being standing water there. Which is a separate, completely separate uh, Right, issue. exactly. You had, made, you had made that point very, very clear on that aspect too. But again, now then going back into that, um, the parking lot area and the roof area, and having that run off into two separate units now as opposed to the one. Right. You're expecting a fix there. And I think I heard Aunt Sandy say, well, and if it doesn't work, but the, in all intent and purpose, what we're trying to do now is to fix what was broken in the first place and maintain that to, to, to a higher standard. Is that correct? Yes. I, I think originally none of us knew how much groundwater creating that new building and creating a slab drainage underneath the basement, the lower level, which you want to do so that you don't have water when it rains and the groundwater comes up coming into people's you know, living environments. Yeah. You don't know how much that, that drainage is, is going to be attracting Absorbed. from across the street. Right. None of us knew that. Uh, so I think that's what we've determined now has created that ongoing uh, water in detention B basin, the one back of Sandy's house, and that's why the, the fix between the, the, the two groups was to split it up, number one, and then raise the basin, number two, uh, so that it's higher up out of the groundwater. So it has the ability to... Be already down lower. So, so it, it'll, it'll drain and then go into the, uh, the, the underground aquifer, uh, aquifer that, that continues on its way as it continues down. Okay. Thank you, Sandy. Um, that sounds good. I really don't have any trouble with that, but however, a couple of years ago when this whole thing was implemented, there was a lot of problems, and I went from board to board to board to board to board to board to board. I mean, it was a loop. No, it was nobody's problem, but it was everybody's problem. They didn't know who to go to, and it was ridiculous. It's worked pretty well, and um, I have to say the Golden <coughs> Pond has stepped up and sprays us, because we did get a lot of standing water. There was supposed to be none, and uh, so the mosquitoes, which, you know, with all the illnesses, they've been spraying our land. It's made a huge difference. So I, I'm, I'm fine with what uh, uh, Larry and, the, and that group wants to do. However, I would like to have some sort of a caveat that if in a year or two or three with this new construction, the whole thing fell apart and it was wrong and there was springs and groundwater that no one calculated in, that we have a place to go because we don't have one now. So it, I don't know exactly how that would be um, written in or it could be uh, looked at or who would be ultimately responsible, but I would like some sort of a thing so that, that me, and, and there is actually another couple of neighbors that would be impacted by this, we know who to call. So that's, that's, a, that's a fair point. I'd just like to get some clarification. Thank you, Sandy, on that from Jennifer. Is there the ability to put a special condition in saying what? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. So a fail suit. Well, well, like a, 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 a bond to ensure? I guess I'm looking for some ideas. It could be a bond or it could be something. I don't know if that's outside of our scope or purview. I, mean, I think it kind of a little bit. I mean, I have to look. I mean, that's. 
a little. Yeah, I, I don't want to make something onerous here or create something that. Like, who's, go, who's gonna enforce it? That's you. the question. Right, right. I don't think this board is in a position right. to be able to do something like that. I'm just trying to be sensitive to both but the we, applicant but as well as the abutters. Shoot through you, Mr. Chair. But we've put conditions in every other development about removing snow mm -hmm. removal. So why can't we just do something with this that they mm -hmm. would agree to? You know, keep the pond, drainage pond clean. Right, well, the, they, have an and they should have an O and M plan for the basins. M so Mr. Chairman, if I may, Joe Marquardt, head of the design team, uh, in uh, respecting the concerns uh, voiced by the abutters, we have beefed up the operation and maintenance plan with the frequency of the inspections, um, the level of detail on the inspections, and we have tied it very closely to. Um, review by the Conservation Commission. Our periodic logs of our inspection reports will go to DEP and the Conservation Commission. I think there's this fear that there are no eyeballs uh, on this site in the past where we look to change that with the uh, current o and plan that is part of the design package was included uh, in the most recent submittal that there will be a group that we speak to frequently um, about the nature of the inspections and uh, the log reports that we're going, that some individual, uh, I think, believed what we volunteered was uh, a registered professional engineer will complete the analysis and inspections and turn those um, logs into the Conservation Commission within 30 days of the completion of the inspection. So there will be a system that will, I think, achieve what you're discussing right now. I think that's probably reasonable. That's uh, reasonable. It that seems to be the case. No, it would be within the purview of the Conservation Commission, yeah. anyways. Yeah. I would think so. It, it, my only follow-up question on that, Joe, might be about cleaning out the basins on a regular basis. Is that part of the O and M plan as well? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yep. There's going to be a, a six-month review after um, the construction era, and then they'll uh, they'll log, um, they'll weed whack it, they'll. Uh, clear out any debris and sediment and then do their uh, inspection report and if there's a glaring weakness they'll set up a uh, remediation program with the owners of Golden Pond and how to fix something that appears to be a recurring problem as a result of construction or design so there will be a, a check that, and balance to that may I Joe, allow it. is is that would that would that constitute a, on an annual basis cleaning out those those retention ponds or no? Uh, it's I believe it's every three months during the construction era, yep. and then every six months, perpetually after the construction era. So within okay. two years, we'll be on a program where we relax to every six months. Okay. Uh, is that something that should have been in place, or is this a new regulation or a new? It's something we proposed originally. Um, we're looking to put a little more teeth into it this time because of the concerns raised. And there's also a recognition at, around Town Hall that we need to beef up these um, inspection protocols uh, as, a, as a matter of course. So it's in keeping with something that we want to, do, uh, to uh, achieve. It's in response to some concerns raised by the neighbors, but it's something that's happening on all the projects we're involved with. So, uh, so just re respectfully, um, I guess I, I, I tap into the concern of um, the neighbors. If it had should have been done and there wasn't a way for neighbors to um, to mitigate for that, to get attention to that, how, how do they do that? Because the system you just outlined was the one that was in place and it's going to work now, but it didn't work before. I'm just... Where does a where does a where does a, a butter an interested neighbor go if they have uh, difficulty and who how can they affect action? I think their their avenues are the same um, as they've always been. I, if I were in their shoes, I would contact both Conservation Commission, DEP, and the owners of Golden Pond to see if the program is being adhered to. Okay, thank you. I just to my fellow board members, I'd like to find a way to condition it just because I think we recognize that the system as outlined didn't work particularly before and we need to have some way to make sure that we can make sure it does work. Is there a compliance officer, Jennifer? Jennifer. I mean technically me on behalf of you, but I mean, this position, if it's not me, if, I'm, if I leave, 
Not that you're going to. That's not what you're saying. Use the third person. Right? That's right. And we can incorporate the maintenance plan into the. Yes, it's part of the pack. It's not even part of the conditions, but it's part of the approval. It will be part of the decision. I make that up, sure. Part of this project is a multi year project, multi phase project. Uh, on one hand, Kerry's uh, been a very good steward of Ice House Pond and made it a destination, again, where people could go and enjoy it, uh, as well as the senior citizens that are under his care. Um, but on the other hand, it's been two other phases where this has been an issue, and so I think hopefully the solution is in place, and then, um, but what happens if it's not? Uh, historically, he's always tried to resolve it. So um, I, I've spoken to Sandy and other neighbors that have been concerned, and um, <coughs> he's been responsive and working with them. And as we've seen tonight, they're working together to right. resolve questions like the paths and, and what's going on with the detention pond. Uh, I'd like to see us put a condition in that specifically says. Uh, spells out that if, if, if there is an issue a year from now with a detention bond uh, that it, we it's acknowledged that the management plan is, is existing and and uh, I think it I think it would have not to interrupt you Frank, sure. but I think you would have to say something like that the operation and maintenance plan for the stormwater management system would will be adhered to and if it's found to not be adhered to it would be considered a violation of the site plan approval which would then bring them back before you, and then at that time the board could make a decision on how to react. I'm not sure that we can sit here now and say, if they don't follow it, we're gonna punish them this way, this way, and this way. Uh -oh. But I think if we say that it needs to be adhered to, and if it's found to not be adhered to, if, if we get report back from DEP or CONCOM that they're not adhering to it, then that we would consider that a violation of the site plan approval, and that we would then bring them back such. before the board. I think you try to keep it simple, and that seems to me like a logical, I mean, they've got their own M plan. They've, mm -hmm. they've already kind of thought through this. Now it's more a function of just adhering to it. And Sure. Well, I'm sure they'll adhere to it, but will it work? And we, we, sure. all, we, want, oh, we yeah, all want it. You know, in a yeah, perfect world. We're on a hypothetical. Right. Right? So let's, they have a plan in place. Beta's I mean, reviewed they have two it. engineers review it. I think Everybody's we have to give them that for the yes. 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 Yeah. The chair, yes. final, final point. Thing. <laughs> Last point. Um, I think DEP and the Conservation Commission have expertise over these kind of things. They, they have engineers. They, they're going to be receiving reports. It's something that, you know, is part of the order of conditions that they, you know, they need to comply with. And there is already an oversight board. I don't need, I don't see a need to add another layer here. Well, we're acknowledging other layers. And, and not just that. I mean, like Jen said, I mean, if it was just stated in there as a, as a, uh, as a caveat to what can be done, then great. And, and I think that's the simplicity of it. Can we put a checkbox on this? I already did. So. <laughs> <laughs> I did too long ago. Uh, utilities, right? I'm just going on the list, everybody. The best yeah. one. Utilities. I had a note from the last meeting, John Westerling. I don't know if there was an update on that. Uh, we did get something in writing saying that they did have the capacity, so yeah. that should be closed out, I believe. So we're all set on that mm -hmm. one. That was the water question? Yes. Utilities. Utilities. Yeah. Uh, any other questions from board members on utilities, per se? Uh, number eight, uh, Comcom. I believe they just got an approval, right, Joe? Joe, about ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Conservation, the board you want to oh. recap it at the. Conservation about 15 minutes ago voted to close and approve the plan as proposed, the one that you have in front of you now. Okay. I can add. Thank you, Joe. That's been a, a long time in, in the works. And thanks for all your help, Joe, on that. Uh, any other questions on number eight, CONCOM, or design review from planning board members or members of the public? Checkbox number nine, public comments discussion. Anything else, Sandy? We okay? I am okay, as long as I know where to go. Like I said, there was a a time when I, several times, I went round, 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 and it was nobody's problem. Everybody was concerned. There was nobody's problem. As long as you feel there is a place to go, 
just in case things don't fall the way they're supposed to. Other than that, I'm, I'm happy with all of it. It's fine. Any problems? One eight hundred John Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Don't, 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 probably don't put that in the record. It's an eight eight eight. Isn't that too many numbers? <laughs> yeah. This is good. The one nine hundred. Thank you. All right. All right. A minute. Uh, number ten. Um, and I think we're getting down here. I see the light. Discussing discuss conditions of approval with the applicants. So we had um, had our standard conditions, and then. At the one meeting that I missed when I was sick, um, there was two additional conditions that were brought forward by the board that your attorney had wanted to review, and I never heard back from him whether or not he was okay with those two conditions. So if the board is, wants to approve them tonight, we don't have feedback from the applicant. Which conditions were these? Um, they would have been on in, our mem in my memo, eight and nine, I believe. So I know one of them is The applicant curbing. commits to add asphalt yes. curbing to the sidewalk. So there's there's still an open question, though, because uh, Phil was just going to double check that drainage was okay, to add the curbing. Um, oh, I, nobody told me Somebody brought that. up a question about making sure that the water would drain properly. Storm water management if there was a problem. Uh, I say yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't remember what the drainage is to be. All well, I think you want to make sure there were none. If we I'm, I'm guessing right. if we got a clean letter, we're all okay, set. Okay, cool. Thank you. And then the other one is the additional lighting installed right, in yeah. connection with phase three of Golden Pond expansion project shall not result in light spillage onto abutting properties. We're fine with that. Yeah, and I, I thought we cleared that up anyway mm -hmm. because it was a it was a pathway through the the buildings. the buildings themselves. So I don't think the spillage would go anywhere except for where it's intended. So I think that that was all taken care of in there. Okay. Is Sounds there like they're okay with both. Yes, we are. Is there some place we should put in there about the stone wall? Is a condition that the stone wall and will the be path. made safe? Well, I think that he shows, is showing great faith on I saying that he would do it. I um, think it needs to be I'm just not sure under, well, under, which, under which site plan criteria those two items would fall, fall and whether or not you have jurisdiction over uh, them. I thought we just talked about adding a third condition. With the stormwater, yeah, with yeah, and I'm writing that up right so now. So wouldn't that be part of the? Uh, I don't think the restoration of the stone wall, particularly in the area or the okay. path, is uh, part of the stormwater, but it is certainly part of the aesthetics of the site, and that is the purview of a site plan mm -hmm. review. But all your conditions have to meet, have to match one of your site plan standards. Yeah. So yeah, if you way. can tell me which standard that would fall under, I'd be more than happy That's to. Cross reference everything. Uh, no, it has to be in line with it. I mean, it can fall under all of the like the well, construction hours and things like that fall under all of the unique, unique natural historical features. features. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know anything about the bridge. Okay. If it's, okay. Okay. Well, I just as soon ask the applicant if he moves. So, you know, um, I'm just like to say. We're going back and forth. I mean, I believe. I have a uh, public I, comment, but go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I go believe ahead. that that particular situation sounds to me like an agreement between the applicant and the homeowner. Right. I don't know that it needs to be uh, a condition necessarily. I mean, if, if unless you feel I, otherwise. Uh, respectfully, just, I disagree. I disagree uh, as well. It's not aesthetics. It's safety. There's big, huge boulders that are falling. If, oh. if a kid tries to climb over them, those damn things are going to fall on the okay. kids. This is a safety issue okay. Okay. that okay. needs to be restored. Okay, so, so to that point, if I may, um, we have a place that um, for compliance is num letter B, unique natural and historical features shall be preserved wherever feasible. That is that okay to be? I've already said that we'll. Yes, I, uh, right. Make a look. I, and that's. I just want it to be explicit. So, so maybe just have a sub bullet under B. That's that, fine. That just points to the, the grass trail would be one, and then the uh, the restoration or the uh, making make, making the stone wall safe. That sounds good. Let me just say, when I was on the planning board for 150 years, we used to talk about the big bus. You, they, anybody can promise anything. The big bus comes and you know hits somebody, and then if it isn't written down, right. it, there is nothing to hang your hat on. Okay. So if there's a condition you want, be sure you get it in your decision. 
That's what I can heard from my site plan bus, class right? as well, by the way. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Small bus. Right. Let me just repeat. Under number B, I'd have two sub bullets. One would be the, and the wording here, Jennifer, mm -hmm. um, the maintenance of the grass path. It would be a condition, an added condition on yep. S10. That oh, it only right. has yeah. to tie back to that. This okay. doesn't get so. Far. Yep. I, I, so 10 is the O and M plan. 11 would be maintenance of grass path. And stone wall. Okay. okay, but we don't have any stone wall between detention pond and um, details as to how that's going to happen. We're just going to leave that up to them. And this is only applicable to this this applicant. Correct. Yes. Okay. This this is what we're doing. This site. Plan. And, and is it maintenance or repair? And maintenance. Uh, it sounds I, to me like yeah, I'm just saying. I, I, I mean, I, I, if we're if we're going to be specific, clear, we yeah, need we need to be clear. very clear. Then so I'm happy to go out and look at it. Too. Stone wall. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm what, not what, familiar. What so we're willing to do yeah. is a stone wall in the middle of our property. Okay, yes. that's about 100 feet long. Okay, yeah. that when we did the detention basin, some of the rocks kind of fell over. Yeah. We can put those in place. We will make it safe. Okay, perfect. so that okay. it's perfect. Beautiful. So that it's put back and make it safe. Kind of a safety issue. Yes. And, and are you concerned about the pathway that, that, that comes along that end of the detention basin or the one that goes up over the hill? Uh, kind of both. I'd like to, to have um, you know people from this end of the street, it was never a problem. They've kind of crossed our property and go up, up over the knot hill. I don't care where you put it, um, Perry, you know, just as long as there's a way to get over the hill to ice skate okay. or sled, sled with the kids. Because okay. so. you, you know what. East Main Street is a little rough. <laughs> I know. Yeah. We, we, we've taken a lot of pride in, in yep. taking care yeah. of the pathway around the pond. Yes, you have. Yeah. We spent money last year taking down a lot of the trees that have overgrown, and we continue to do that on an annual basis. Yep. We've gone through there every five or six years, and we, uh, we, we take a little machine in there, and we clear away the it's roots beautiful. and so forth, and we put down more, uh, you know, stone right. dust and so mm -hmm. forth. Yeah. We, we like it to be, be safe for our residents who like to use it, mm -hmm. and any... Uh, residents from the town of Hockington that, that find their way to the pond, want to walk around the pond, you know. Yeah, so. we appreciate that. Yeah. It's a real, it's, a, it's yeah. really a centerpiece. Can I, no, no, yeah. really and we is. want to keep it that way, and yeah. I, I, I yeah. want it to be that way for not only our residents, but for the people I just we appreciate that. Thank you. Know, Thank you, and you're doing, you're doing a great care. job with it. Jennifer, <laughs> not, not to beat a dead horse, but so this path, is it from Elm Street to the pond? Where is it going from and to? From, from behind 33 Elm? Is that well, where it comes? Just, I just want to be specific. Property. So yeah. you're not required to build some kind of big thing. Elm Street to Ice House Pond? Would it be because along that hill? hill? That's not no, enough because no. we don't have access. All right, well, just give, us some, kind of, just give us some kind of end point. That's what she's asking for. Uh, you come off my land and come up between mine and, and my neighbors just so we can get up. From, how about from the east side of the property to the west side of the property? Just a little footpath. Yes, we can use that. But there's also a little pathway that kind of comes up over the top and kind of then winds way down. It used to just come through here and wind up and we exit and we take We're going to be coordinates. I can't get to it. GPS coordinates. It's the simple pathway from the north side of the property to wherever the pathway it's all well and good until someone goes out there to inspect it and they say, well, how long did you want it? How big did you yeah. want it? How wide did you want it? What did you want it made out of? It's a grass path. Mm -hmm. Let's ask him how wide it he expects it. That's the only question to be wide. I mean, are we making it ADA accessible? Because it's going to be a public path. I mean, I'm not trying to be... No, 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 no I know. No, but you're following protocol, which is, like, which is right. This is true. If it's going to be a public access path... But it, I don't know if... I don't think it is a public access we need a yeah. condition for it? No, if we... can not a public access To the chair. Yeah, can of worms. Yeah, hold on. Hold on, let's just see. Joe? What do you propose or what do you guys have discussed? There is proposed on the plans the for the periodic maintenance that we just discussed against that westerly boundary line. There's a 10-foot wide path that leads up beyond the dumpster pad to the pavement. We would like to have the board consider that location. We would encourage folks to use that location and not cut through the site and 
create a maintenance issue for the staff at Golden Pond to maintain several locations if the goal is to provide a safe access point for these folks to get from the neighboring properties to the facility and then cut quickly over to the pond. So along that boundary line where our basin access is for the ongoing maintenance, we would like the board to consider that the spot for the neighbors to use to get up into the facility. And that's about a 10 to 15 wide grassy area that is mowed continually throughout the year. It's underneath the drainage pipes. It allows us to have access down into the detention basin so that we can do what we need to down there. So I don't think we, we need to do anything. So it's our around the detention basin, what we've not done in the past is get down in the basin because we didn't think we were supposed to. Yeah. And now we're going to be getting down in the basin and keeping the, the growth out of there too. So all that will work very well. well. So if it's mowed the way it is, it's an easy path. It is. So it exists. Yeah. So yeah. If so I'm so understanding that. Yes, yeah, so it's it a exists. slightly different route than what Sandy So we don't need a condition. Right. So we don't need the condition. So we just well, I'm just going to add that will be, okay. the residents will be allowed to use it. Like okay. Okay. That's yeah. fine. Residents will be allowed to use that path. Is good. Right, guys? Right. <coughs> and, then and then I'm going to do a separate one for the stone wall. will be repaired on the property. And that would be under... Section B. Be prepared, repaired, to a safe condition yeah. for passage. Yes. Moving on. I'll do better when I have more time. <laughs> okay. I know it's <laughs> okay, so now we have 12 conditions. Okay. Um, is there any, so did it, did we have 12 conditions in total? Mm hmm. Uh, we'll walk through each of the conditions and make sure everyone in the applicant is okay with those conditions. Okay. In and preparation for in the vote. In preparation of the vote. And I'll be, I think 11, if there's any additional final comment from the public. So, do I have, Jennifer, the... It's in my memo. Should we make a motion? So it's on page nine in my memo. Can I make a motion uh, to? Proposed conditions. All right. Mr. Uh, Chair? Yes, sir. Instead of just reading to the, the conditions, can we make a motion to approve, approve this with the conditions and read the conditions? With the addition, with the other additional conditions. Yeah, okay. So, uh, is everybody okay with that? I'll make a motion. Instead of hearing me, somebody wants to Well, didn't we have a, a protocol that we wanted to read the conditions before projects like this? I can read the conditions. Um, summarize them. It'll take a little bit of time. I can read them. Can we, sum we sum summarize them? I'll refer I'll defer to John's opinion. Yeah, as part yeah of you that. should read them. I'll read them. Just to be fair. Yeah. Speed read. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> so, what we're going to do right now is go through the conditions. Make sure everyone is comfortable with the conditions as a precursor to his voting. All right, number one, the applicant shall be responsible for mitigating all construction-related impacts, including erosion, siltation, and dust control in a timely manner. Number two, the applicant shall regularly remove construction trash and debris from the site in accordance with good construction practices. No tree stumps, demolition material, trash, or debris shall be burned, buried, or buried on the site. In the event that the amount of snow on the site exceeds the amount that can be accommodated safely in the snow storage areas indicated on the site plan, the excess snow shall be removed from the parking area. Parentheses, site plan standard J. Number four, mechanical equipment or other utility hardware on the roof, comma, grounds or buildings shall be screened from view from the ground, site plan standard Q. Number five, the director of municipal inspections and uh, inspections inspects site plans under construction for compliance with the approved decision of the site plan review. If the director of the municipal inspections determines that at any time before or during the construction that a registered professional engineer or other such outside professional is required to assist with the inspections of the stormwater management system or any other component of site plan, the applicant shall be responsible for the cost of those inspections. Number six, in accordance with 210-138 of the zoning bylaw, the applicant shall provide a performance guarantee in the amount of $3,000 to the town prior to the commencement of construction pursuant to this decision. The guarantee shall consist of a deposit of money or negotiable securities in the, in the form selected by the planning board to guarantee that any unforeseen problems which arise, such as erosion and sedimentation and the, cor uh, and the correction of site lighting problems are addressed. 
The fund shall be held by the town and returned to the applicant upon completion of the project. Number seven, the construction may occur only between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. pursuant to Chapter 141, Article 1 of the Town of Hopkinton General Bylaws. Number eight, the applicant commits to added uh, to add asphalt curbing to the sidewalks previously constructed along the frontage of this parcel, similar to designs, uh, similar in design that to that used for the section of sidewalk installed between the Golden Pond facility and the corner of West Main Street and Lumber Street extension. Number nine, additional lighting installations in connection with phase three of the Golden Pond expansion project shall not result in light, light spillage onto the abutting properties. Jennifer, number 10. Um, the operation and maintenance plan for the stormwater management system, system as submitted will be adhered to. If it is found that it is not adhered to, it would be considered a violation on the site plan approval. Very good. Anything else? Um, like 11 and 12. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, a path along the westerly boundary of 10, uh, no, I'm sorry, 10 foot wide path along the westerly boundary of the property will be, will be used, will, allow, will be, will be will, allowed. We allowed for residents to be used to access the pond. And 12 is the stone wall on the property will be repaired to a safe condition for passage. Any questions? Passage and safety. The applicant? Just one question. Uh, the uh, lighting, um, it's not to exceed the spillage that you have. I, I you know, I'm sure you have a lighting plant. Is that going to increase, increase the lumens at night or is that going to be all shielded and no more lighting coming off the site that is there now? So I think that was already addressed in yes. um, number E. Uh, and beta was fine with that. I think mostly the lighting was on the interior side, if I'm not mistaken. The, the only additional side. lighting for the chair. Yeah. In, in, in rooms at all, or in a well, shield on everything. Not four o'clock on the property now. Can I just ask that we designate it? It's a 100 foot stone wall just for yep. dimensions. Or estimated. Estimated, thank you, yes. Are we ready for a vote, everybody? Yes. Just make sure you vote to the plan meets the site, site plan standards as well. So is there a motion to approve the site plan and the site plan standards in adherence with the site plan standards as stated? I'll make that motion. Motion second. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. Motion and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstain? <coughs> motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck. Gentlemen. Do you, wait, do we need, do you need, what, isn't there another one? Uh, oh, it's two votes. Two votes. Two votes. Conditions, right? Conditions. Yeah. Well, they, they combined them. I combined them. They combined them. They combined them, too. Okay. They, we did a combined vote. You right. Okay. The standard end of the plan with conditions at the same time. At, at so state. heard it. She did. I hear it. And then just close <laughs> the public hearing. Yeah, a motion to close the public so hearing. Moved. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Sorry. Second. Second. All, right. all those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All, right. all those opposed? All those abstain? Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, the floor is yours. Thank you. Nice <laughs> job. Good job. Nice, nice job. job. You couldn't wait to say that. I said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, the other thing I don't think we could do that uh, Jennifer mentioned is to get everything done on the plan. We're going to midnight tonight. Did it? She might have left that out of her memo. She left that out of that my memo anyway. <laughs> Any of you believe I would stay here till midnight? <laughs> I'm not never worried about that, right? right you got so our we back. have the uh, let's. Uh, we're not going to get through everything, but uh, kind of walk <coughs> through the. Uh, implementation plan and the question the first question that I have is um, do we want to walk through all of them in order walk through the ones that are responsibility primary responsibility of the planning board uh, and then go through the rest of them I would do the planning board first, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you weren't here at the last meeting, but I think yeah. we, we had talked about doing the planning board ones okay. and sending a letter to the other boards right. that have responsibility. I didn't know if people wanted an explanation of what the others meant. Oh. I'll give you an update on the historic district one. 
<laughs> I haven't sent all those letters yet. By the way. So it starts at 77, Jen, and goes to 92. I think, I think that's it correct. Does. Okay. That is correct. So right. do we need to vote to send a letter to the other boards, or that no, no. And and you probably only have to focus on ones that have like a, either ongoing annual or like upcoming deadlines, like right. ones that are like 2020 or 2021. I wouldn't. We have a lot of ongoing, as I remember. <laughs> yes, we do have there are quite a few. I was saying I congratulate everybody for having an implementation plan. Now let's just right. get at that next step forward, right? Yep. So the first one related to the planning board is LU3, encourage site development, which follows the natural features and contours of land, <laughs> minimizes, so it sounds very familiar, Service yes. the natural environment. I don't know if we need to read through um, out loud, but if people want to, you know, review it, read it and... I don't think there's any like a direct action on this one. I think it's just ongoing. It's ongoing, but I want to projects. see if anybody has any questions. I have I have something yeah. to add to that, if you'd like, um, Chair, and that would be that your reference of working with neighbors, not just a butters, was was really cool. And I, if you can put that in there somewhere, or you the two can't add anything at this can't point. Add anything yeah. at this yeah. point. Yeah. All right, so it's redundant enough for us to even <laughs> consider Absolutely. changing or adding yeah. to. Yeah. Right. No, but it's something that we can think about Future. when we have... Or if we have action items that we need to, yeah, take, right. to reach these goals. Yeah, yeah and right. not only that, but if we have successes, if we can document them and, and set the example, right, sure. for other boards and committees, Pressing. too. If we have, right. if we have um, specific things to call out, that would be good. So does our zoning currently encourage these things, or are we, do we have any recommended zoning changes? That's a, that's a million gonna, dollar question. I was actually going to say that because how mm -hmm. is it that we're actually, I'm, I'm thinking of the, um, uh, the solar farm, the solar farm, um, the clear cutting of the lots, the, uh, um, oh, Saddle, oh, Hill. Saddle Hill, Saddle Hill, yes. And, you know, they just went ahead and cleared everything out. So how do we preserve, how do we encourage them? to preserve mature trees, stone walls. Yeah. And that's, uh, it, that dovetails with a question that I had um, on a uh, suggestion to talk about is, what is our process and can we beef up the process or we, can we inform the building inspector's process so people are um, signing off on, you know, knowing about what the rules are on scenic roads and I don't know what the process is mm -hmm. um, when a developer comes in to a, to a lot. I don't, know, I don't know if there's a way to implement a little education uh, video or whatever and make people sign off. Well, I think you had met Jennifer with them before they started. Yeah, they knew. They, they knew they were on it. I mean, there was right. no doubt they were on it. They knew they were on a scenic road. They know from the very beginning. And then they knew the rules. And we, we, they don't necessarily have to sign anything or see, note anything. They, they cut first and ask questions later. Right. Right. So is there a way? So I think that this is a rich discussion point. Is there a way for us to affect a process um, that minimizes that happening going forward? Not throwing any so blame on what anybody. What gets done in our office is... Um, Elaine is really good at reviewing all of the land, the sale transactions of the town, and any sale that happens on a scenic road, she sends that new owner a letter, okay. identifying that they're on a scenic road, and that there are regulations that are in place, and you know if you want to do anything in your property, this is what you need to do. That's so great. she's pretty good at doing that. You see, that that only applies to scenic roads. So as a well, that's what she was asking about. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, that's an action plan. We're saying that's what we're supposed to be encouraging overall. So, so that's how something that's currently happening then. So yeah. that's good. Um, so that, I mean, kudos that that's already happening. But if we're trying to find, I mean, do we need to uh, look at another way of preserving it on non scenic roads? I, I am definitely amenable okay. to that conversation. I don't know how it's done, but I think that that is a rich conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, I and think, I think we got to be careful of private property rights mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. there's two ways of, of doing it. One is an actual zoning change, and that's very difficult. The other is basically using it as a bargaining mm -hmm. chip. Mm -hmm. If you want to do this, 
then we suggest you do this as compensation for it. So if if we have discretion to grant <coughs> approval for something, right, that is not an automatic of you know we have to actually grant approval for it, and there's a basis or take situations where uh, you know the wording is some other benefit for the town, et cetera. It's incorporation of those type of things as their kind of our bargaining chip, if you want to get approval for this, work with us on these other items because we see these as beneficial for the town and help to compensate for this additional approval we're giving it. So that makes sense, except that if they're going to cut the trees down and then come ask for the right. approval, then it's too late. So I don't know if there's a way to be more proactive. Well, we, well, I, we fine people for doing that. But that's just well, there's a part of the... No, I'm not talking about the scenic road that they're... Like, right. like Mr. Churko is allowed to dock his trees down whether right. or not he wants right. to build a solar mm -hmm. farm. Mm -hmm. right. And he could just do it today right. if he wanted. Um, right. Is there a way to incentivize, to incentivize people, yes. to incentivize people to uh, be more creative and thoughtful, thoughtful about mature trees and, and uh, scenic features, which it, you would almost feel like people would tend to that, but they you're not gonna you can't assume. Scene. I mean, at the end of the day, if yeah. they're going to get more value by keeping the big trees in, the, my sense is they would probably do it. But from a from a development standpoint, yeah. it's easier for them just to kind of clear cut the whole thing, mm -hmm. so they can put in the the, the, the well and the, the without the, obstruction. Yeah, without obstruction, and then they're on to the next one because it's all about fast, generating revenue. Fast, yeah. moving. I mean, I, I hear you. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. but yeah. it, no, I know. I get. I got it. I yeah. have a question. Is there an ability to protect larger trees? On private property, if they don't, unless they're in a wetland, no. No. Yeah, and it's on the. Whew, that would be tough. Because the reason I'm saying that is where I grew up in New York. In New York, they do have for certain trees I that are not scenic, that are in the private property, huh. and historic, historic, historic if the tree is determined to be over a certain age, etc. Uh, Wouldn't want to take that one to town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> that I think is the. you to be a little brave. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's. But, that, but I think that. Yeah. Yeah. Really I, I, I think John should go ahead and propose that. John, I think the difference in that is is that that's a city versus. No. No. Mm -mm. No. Village. Village. And then what you have to France Point is there was someone who, uh, and these houses, the potential houses are in the three, four, five million dollar range. And even though there's fines for taking these trees down, yep. it's, not effective. it's yeah. not effective because if you're putting up a three million dollar house mm -hmm. and Boom. you have to Cost spend 50, 60, 70 thousand as a fine to do it, it's a part of the added cost. It's also a, drop a, a gray area about the legality of that bylaw of New York of telling people yeah. what they can do on their private property because it's like here with the earth, with the the uh, drought where they say even if you have a well you can't water your property but that's totally illegal you can do whatever you want yeah. with your well. Some states oh, I don't you think can. it's illegal. It's the same aquifer. You, they can't tell you what to do on your private property. I think that they can, and I think when that it they comes do. to yeah. water, to a certain extent, can. they can. But if I, would, when it comes I would to contest that. Well. well, you can. We can feel however we want to feel right. about it, right. but right. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's. But I'm telling you yeah. what I've heard from you other didn't people. Take the water conservation. One. I mean, I can't. Say I haven't taken the water conservation one not yet. No, but. Um, I'm I mean, I haven't heard from a lawyer. I've heard it from other people. Yeah, no, and I think that we've. Oh, I think we've seen that explanation as residents from the water department. Yeah. Um, in the past, that even if in t times of severe drought, even if you are on, on your own private well, um, it's all the same aquifer, and they're protecting everybody's drinking water. I think water. constitutionally, yeah. constitutionally, how can you tell me what to do on my property? It's it, there's all kinds of rules. Well, there's a, there's a rule that exists about, uh, about me, murdering no. something on your property. No, no, no. <laughs> that when people buy land, they buy the the topical graphical aspect of the land. They don't. Do, get rights to to so mineral right. rights to the land underneath. So if there's an aquifer underneath the wall, the thing, it's just like fracking. People can buy land, but if if the government wants to go in and buy to frack on that land, 
they and they have an access point. They can go in and frack on your land because you don't have the mineral rights to that land. I don't land. think that applies anyway. in this. See, we had the EHOP spotlight on water about a year ago, and the, someone from the Board of Health and from the Water Department, or the DPW, came. And the way he explained it was that they really encourage people in the private wells to conserve their water because if their well went dry, then they have to go to the Board of Health and get a permit to drill a new well. But that they could not require them to conserve their water the way they could somebody on town water. That's, that's how they explain it to why us. Do, why do you think so when, you when you drive through Westboro, when you drive through Westboro, you know the senior center right now, um, uh, what's that? Lyman Street, they say using well water. They have so, a sign that says using right, well water. And golf courses do that as well. Because there are exceptions yeah. to, for businesses. There are. Golf courses fall under the Water Management Act, and that's how they're regulated. Um, I, I don't know why we have to argue about this, by the way, because yeah. we're not going to control this one. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, yeah, pull it off. All right, bring it back. Okay. There we go. Uh, any more questions on MU3? No, but I don't think that we necessarily came up with a, a great yeah, idea, which I don't, yeah. that's not, that's, but, uh, that's not, a it's not really a great, great idea. I think yeah. it's more as you're reviewing projects. Yeah. And I, keep make sure fast. you're, you're encouraging applicants to preserve the natural features as much as possible. I think right. that's what that one is asking. Yeah. LU4 reply, uh, yeah, applies to the Hopkinton zoning bylaws. Uh, and I think that's what <laughs> Zach. Zach and you know Muriel has a, a, a couple of comments related to that. Yeah, I so not necessarily from my comments. This one, I, as I was reading through this for this meeting, um, I'm not really sure that we have ever really done this in a comprehensive, uh, certainly not in a comprehensive way. I, I I think it's a really interesting question and a really complicated question and one that. We, I don't think the Zoning Advisory Committee or the Planning Board, any Planning Board is going to solve, but, but possibly uh, a professional consultant could take a look at the master plan and look at the, the zoning bylaws and give us some insight uh, about how well we are trying In to, achieve, you know, are achieving our master plan through zoning. I don't know. I, I just, it's the zoning, the zoning bylaws are masterfully complex and layered and i think part that of the so issue diplomatic. was that nice <laughs> yes. part yeah. of the issue is with the town structure of open town meeting everything has to go through open town meeting and the kind of track record is you're better off with a success of a few bites at a time than a large movement at a time because historically when we've tried larger movements, that has garnered the most opposition. I don't um, disagree. Uh, so I think it's looking at it and maybe over the course of time decide to get to a certain place, but it might be nibble, 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 nibble. Well, so I did have on my list, maybe if a couple of us could sit down and just take it as an action item to sit down and read it together yeah. and, uh, and just, you know, find out how we feel about it and how it works and, and work with Jennifer and and see if there are any obvious points that we can um, or feel the need to to you know move so instead of a book club we have a zoning club. yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome <laughs> yeah it's gonna be awesome could we, I'm just wondering could we get a list of what the zoning advisory committee has looked at is looking at this year do they yeah I have a work plan I can send you okay yeah. it's what I'm sorry I have a work plan I can send yeah no, as far as timing and everything, is it um, because of the adjustment to the schedule of year-end planning and mm -hmm. uh, town meeting, is it uh, too late to make any zoning changes other than the ones you guys are already considering on the board? Well, we have quite an extensive list at the moment. I'm not even sure we're going to get through all the ones My that have been it. proposed. Right. So, I mean, you're more than welcome to always submit suggestions, but I cannot guarantee they will happen in May. And then typically what happens is it goes from this big, you know, it gets whittled down because I think when we've also had going back and you're, you're probably no better when we've had 10 or 12 and there's, you know, it, 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 they tend to all go down uh, because somebody hops on one and then it's too many changes, et cetera. So it's select the battles 
and I think you know we've had typically every year maybe six, seven zoning changes. And can I ask a process to... question on it? Who who puts the legs on the research? Is that you, Jennifer? For what research? For a, a potential zoning change. Uh, it depends on who's proposing it. Mm -hmm. Um, so, like, some of the ones that are being proposed, like, by, like, Scott Richardson and the Chamber of Commerce, they'll do a lot of their own research. Yeah. Um, residents will sometimes bring in their own research. Elaine and I will do a lot of the research yeah. for, like, especially ones from, like, this board or from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. Um, those kinds of things. Okay. Thank you. So Feel free to volunteer to do any research. No, like. no I'm actually kind of interested in it, and it wasn't, um, so... It, it just wasn't clear to me that that um, that when I, I was just in the audience one time, it wasn't clear to me what the process was, or that. And I know it's a big, cumbersome group, and and we get a lot of credit for that. So, so, um, but I just you know wondered you know what what is the target, what is the process. I also will be candid. I feel that um, that a couple members of the board were not receptive to hearing from the public and hearing people's ideas, and that was problematic for me. Um, and I think that as a, um, kind of like the water discussion, we can feel however we want to feel about a resident's proposed idea or a board's proposed idea, but it's incumbent upon all of us to receive it and research it and co contemplate it um, on behalf of the whole town, not on behalf of our own Genius. expectations or feelings are you referring to the current board committee? yeah so cl clarify that what, 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 what I didn't feel that people were very receptive to people's ideas Zach. As they're, as Zach. Zach. yeah okay. yeah mm. and I, there were a lot of people that were listening there was a couple people who were a little um, I, they were a little off-putting they were a little hostile to people's ideas what a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily helpful and engaging, and here's the thing, here's the process, here's what, here's what we think we need to do. Um, so I'm wondering, though, if some of that is because they're new to gov town government and they may not even be aware of the process and how things work, and that was probably only their second meeting yes, ever. Yeah. So I'm not disagreeing, because I wasn't at that meeting right. either, so I don't know if... I don't know how if they were really being that way or if that was just a perception because they're so new and so green that they have no so idea. So that, that was sort of, that, that's how I tried to sort of frame it in my comments was, you know, is there a charge? Is there a way to frame mm -hmm. it? Is there a way to inform it for people who are brand new to it? And we want to encourage that, right? That's the whole point, yep. is we wanted new people. Um, I may, so. Frank, Fran, you're on that committee? I am. Is, is, are you the vice chair? I know. No. <laughs> John Patino's the chair? John's the chair David and Hammer. David, David Hammer. 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 So, so my hope is that those guys can manage the, the group and as they go along in meetings, you know, some of the edges get rubbed down and sanded off. I would temper your hopes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think just from my experience so far with them, I think some of the newer people, um, we're seeing a lot of the same backlash that we saw at the election with the no growth people. And I think, some of the people volunteered strictly for that reason and have a lot of, um, I think, agendas, personally. So so I, I think that's going to be... I just want to be clear. I wouldn't, I, I don't want to, I don't want anybody to walk away from this meeting or leave the TV thinking that it's the new folks necessarily. No, nope, no. Nope. Because that isn't, that isn't the situation at all. Um, and I'm very open to everybody who threw in. Absolutely. But everybody who's around that table, and I would say that... The, the newer people were more more open and amenable to ideas than perhaps the people that were more experienced, mm -hmm. in, in my opinion. And just it's our subcommittee, right? Yep. We, yep. we formed it. Right. I would I would like to charge them to be, you know, purposefully respectful and purposely op open, not agreeing to everything. That's not the point. But they need to they need to encourage participation as on behalf of the I mean, town. And I'm happy to kind of share that message back. Yeah. As the representative from this board over to Zach, and at the next meeting, I will uh, make those comments known. Two days from now. 
two minutes days from now. Thank you for the agenda, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just want to make it clear, I'm not babysitting that effort. It is my intention to observe the ZAC as much as I'm uh, as possible because I'm, I'm kind of keenly interested in, in zoning and the workings of the board. So um, if I'm there, it's not because I'm trying to oversee other people's work. I just am interested in the process. And you know that the next stages are when they do move uh, zoning changes to us, then we debate and learn about them and, and talk about them, and then we vote to move those forward to town meeting, and then John and John will be presenting them to the town meeting. It, it will be uh, just, it will be very interesting because that, that body has to make any suggestions, uh, has to complete any suggestions to us by the end of this year, right? Just no. September 1st? Sooner than that. It's yeah. December, like December, by the end of the year, right? December. Yeah. Right? So they've got essentially two yeah. meetings. It's hard. Maybe three meetings. Yeah, if we get one or two things it's from the, that. That's the bigger problem. It's going yeah. yeah. to be a light zoning yeah. year, so, I think. There'll be, that'll yeah. be it. So can we add this to our timeline that maybe the earlier in the fall we need to think about our suggestions that we want to pass on to DAC to consider? I don't, well, I think we, we talked now. about it at the last meeting, I think, um, just when we talk about Zach in general, maybe establishing them earlier now, because mm -hmm. now that the charter's been redone and there's a new a whole new process and timeline, yep. establishing them earlier, giving them like a charge sooner rather than later, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And so I think that all goes hand in hand, because yeah. this shorter time span is kind of crunching everybody. Is there, everybody. Is, yeah. is so there can we any... add that to the implementation plan that next year we're going to start it? I don't think that needs to go here. I think that's a separate. But we could okay. we could note that, right? We could note that we're taking those kinds of steps. That's exactly the kind of thing that, you know, this is part we'll of what we're doing time. to try and implement this particular right. priority in them. Yeah. Is there any re I, I know the, the argument was summer. Is there any reason not to, you know, like June after town meeting to get it rolling? I don't think so. No, and I would think that the planning board could be keeping a list of priorities to send forward, yeah. too. Because if you've started in September and you've got October, November, and then... This is this is a, well, this is a crazy time. So, topic. Elaine and I do keep lists. So, if okay. you have stuff throughout the year, you're more welcome <coughs> to give them to me or Elaine. Yeah. And we keep lists and we forward those to Zach right. when we get them, when we, when we establish Zach. So, because people call us, residents call us yeah. throughout the year Perfect. and give us ideas okay. too. So we'll keep, we'll each keep a list. But, so if you guys have information that you want to, yeah. throughout the year, feel free, instead of, you know, the board, you can just give it to me or give it to okay. me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Because I think, you know, especially if you get something in by December, you're meeting twice a month. So essentially, you're trying to get you're getting maybe four meetings in, right? No, October and November. If you start sooner, you'll at least get boy six, eight meetings, which I think would be enough to have some robust discussion back and forth, and then be able to put a number of proposals for this board to then consider. Because I think if you do it now, some of the ones that are new, mm. uh, it takes a couple meetings just to figure out who's on first, mm -hmm. and all totally. of a sudden. Group dynamics, group cohesion. Yeah. Well, and zoning changes are, are huge, and they're yeah. fraught, and they're 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 complicated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. So yeah. We will have a public hearing on the zoning yes. uh, changes before the yes. meeting. But does that have a public meeting? February first, I think it's scheduled for. Oh, I yeah. guess I would ask that we do Sorry, it. scheduled a, <laughs> a better job of publicizing that public hearing. Like, if they need, the town has a Facebook page. They can do a Facebook event. They can they can be. A, I'm sure it's on the town website, but. I think if we could all do our part to publicize it more, so pe people are very concerned about zoning, and the more options they have to that comment. Last year, <laughs> it's very accurate. It's very yeah. something we should definitely do. Stay with it. Keep keep throwing it out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, February twelfth. The February. It's February so we already 12th. know it. Like we could make a Facebook event today. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, I wouldn't do that yet until we know what we're getting for zoning articles. <laughs> I wouldn't do that yet, but tentatively. For <sighs> okay. But in general, it, it's okay this year if there are only a few. Uh, Zoning changes because it is a short schedule and, and, and we've had a couple heavy years. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, there's no human, there's no possible way to have a heavy year this year the right. way it's structured. There's just right. not. Sometimes the simplest thing that's just a matter of note keeping changes and updates can take a half an hour and then the complex. Spending two dollars and fifty cents on town meeting floor will take a night and a half. Okay. Spending seventy million. Ten minutes. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, we are 
at the witching saying, hour. That's perfect. That's um, I perfect. just want to hint before we just adjourn. So uh, it is budget season, and Elaine just wanted me to mention that if there's anything that the board feels that they need or want included in the budget, that you should let me know I think we in the next treatment. couple weeks so that she <laughs> could uh, consider adding it to the land use department's budget. I think since we're not going to do paper anymore, maybe the spas would. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you uh, need like counseling for <laughs> 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 okay. lack of paper? Uh, Listen, I am so with you, Fran. There's it, nothing uh, like a pen and paper. If you are going to go paperless and people feel they need to, oh, take notes to the apps, we need to be looking at the yeah. I, already looked yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have to All take, right. I have to take my notes on yeah. paper. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm going to be a great disappointment to this group. Well, you can, you can annotate it and then email it to yourself and you got it right yeah. there. Uh, an emoji oh, on there. Okay. you know what? Can we get a motion? With me, you know, whether I like uh, it or not, you're going to bring second. me into this sentence. We have a motion, a second, yeah, all in will. favor. Aye. 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 Do we get copies of that? A lot of people don't like it. Uh, 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 well, you know, really, it's, it's, it's a reason. I mean, it's the town. You get a chance. You have to adjourn. Me? No, we already adjourned. Uh, uh, to review the budget, can we get a copy of what the budget that relates to? Um, so you don't have your own separate budget right. anymore. You do know that, right? Yes. It's just part of the land use budget. Yeah. Um, do we just. even need a budget, really? Uh -huh. It's not just. Well, if we want I mean, a consultant uh, or something? Yeah. yeah. Well, there is no plan Usually a consultant. Budget. Yes. So Mira, it, might, it might be up to the town about the water. There's a the section article in the plan that says, town in many towns, you guys. homeowners with private wells are allowed mm -hmm. to water their lawns as yeah. much as they want. Oh, okay. So, so maybe it is. How do we see that? I don't think there's a way to make Well, it. so it's not available yet. I think, uh, so I think you're allowed to do whatever you want. Lane always sends it over. I personally uh, yeah. believe in yeah. tough love yeah. for your lawn. If it can't I grow, <laughs> right. No, tough, yeah. tough. If I had a well, I would be considering okay. <laughs> Listen, seriously. <laughs> and you know what? Crabgrass yeah. doesn't grow that but, tall. Yeah, no, she a always sends a feature. And it holds down the dirt. Really, my only priority. Beginning of December. It doesn't grow all year round. No, no, I don't want. I don't want. Always forwards. You know what's funny? I have a I have a well, but it's contaminated. Oh.